Shalom and greetings in the blessed name of Almighty Yah to the revelation Yoshua HaMashiach. This is Reach David Yisrael, a message unto the scattered house, a teaching to the nation of his elect, a people that Almighty Yah has elected to show forth his excellence, and not only that, but the power of prevailing through revelation, understanding of Torah. And there's a profound witness through the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. So we greet the nation of his elect scattered abroad and throughout the Olam, the earth, upon every bit of soil that Yah has created his people scattered throughout the depths, the breadth of the earth. So we greet you all in Yoshua HaMashiach, mighty name. This is a precise teaching, somewhat lengthy. It is a teaching that it is paramount in the time and season that we are in. It will center on one thing, one aspect. The Edomites, Edomi, also a south, and above all that, the word strangers, the gear. Who are the strangers? Who are those that are disinherited? They have no political right, no kind of right within the nation of Israel. They're strangers. They have no inheritance through Torah commands. We must understand the identity of strangers and what does Yah say concerning that? We find ourselves in a generation that we find people, especially those that would be my sons and daughters, these young men today, they will say to you, prove it. While they will compile such external sources of information, and they want to prove what is essence, what is truth, and yet I prove all things from Torah, the Torah examined, it is one of the most powerful instruments of examination of itself. And you can ask the same person to prove that Yoshua HaMashiach, he raised up Lazarus. Where will the external material come from to prove that? Where will the external material come from the profound revelation of Gilyana or revelation? Just like those that we find today that have identified every tribe of Israel. They will tell you that Yehuda are those that are the supposedly Negroes and Benjamin. Those are the West Indies and Levi, the Haitians. And yet there is no empirical proof. No DNA construct. No defining material when they will say prove that will show the identity of Yah's nation scattered abroad. They will take upon a certain characteristic of Esau or the Edomi and say to the hearers of their theological, it is not a Torah concept, but it is a created religion of their own construing of Torah. I believe what Torah says when Yah commands us to Bachan, simply to examine. We must test the validity of Torah and statements by only one thing, Torah. To define the word in its element, and if we understand the words Bachan, 
It is a process of examining as one would purge gold. It is a sarai testing. As the heart of man is tested, that it is investigated, not with external literature, but simple process of understanding the uniqueness of every word, how it is defined. This teaching will be central, centralized in one aspect. We want to understand the Edomites, Issa, and also the strangers. Why? It is vitally important. And I say to you that say that you are of one of the tribes, even as Ruban, the Seminole Indians, prove it. Or you that say you of Yehuda, the Negroes, supposedly, prove it. You that say you are of Zeb Zebulon, Guatemala, and those that are, we call the Panamanians, prove it. I will prove beyond the shadow of a doubt what I shall teach today through thorough examination of Torah by Torah. And Torah shall witness because we must understand who the strangers are. And I will conclude that as we conclude this teaching, it will be somewhat lengthy. Um, there may be some gaps whereby I am or proceed not to be as enthused, but I am, because I want us to understand above all things. I want to be gone, and there are you that understand the concept of the birth of Esau and Yaakov. Bereshit 25, 23, even when Rivka, she knew that there were two nations within her womb. And one would serve the other, that the eldest would serve uh, even the younger. And the Torah says that they were parats, they were divided, even in her bowels. We know what transpired after that. But she tells us that the first one that came out, he was... At money, he was red. Now we cannot define that word without looking at the concept of at money throughout its uh, process or chronological sequence throughout Torah. To do it any other way, we will never define it. So I want to establish this word for a moment: the word at money, that which is red, and ruddy. And he was hairy like a garment, as we know. In order to define this word atmoni, we must examine Torah or Mohan to test and try this word. Every place whereby it is rendered in Torah, there is a place in First Shamul Il or First Samuel. Chapter 17, verse 42. It says that when this vile thing, this Philistine, when he began to survey what was before him, he saw David. And the Torah says he despised him because he was young. And it uses the word ruddy, R-U-D-D-Y, which is atmoni, and the tongues of our forefathers, red, he was red, he was ruddy. And then it tells us he was Yafef, he was handsome, he was charming, he was beautiful of countenance. So I propose unto you that if we prove the definitive of this word, Atzmoni, in the very concept of Yah, when he designed this word, that we may understand Esav, I ask the question, was David a an Edomite? He was red. He was ruddy. And his countenance, of his countenance, 
was he that way? Well, he produced one that was of the same nature. Again, I want to establish this principle because we must understand the stranger. And we will get into the depths of that as I proceed. Here is one that's in the, the Psalms of Shalomo or Shira Hashirim, the singing of Shalomo's heart. The songs of Shalomo Solomon, chapter 5. Verse 9. This is a descriptive of the beauty of Hamashiach, Yoshua. In the very presence, the beauty of Shilomo, it states, What is your daughter, your beloved, more than another beloved? O you fairies, you yafef, tifra, among women. What is your beloved more than another beloved? You tell me that the simile, the body of Yeshua is much more beautiful than the body of Islam, the body of Buddha, the body of Confucius? Absolutely. That you do so charge us to say, as Yah has commanded, this nation is a great blessing to all nations. There's no other nation of people that would enrich the world through the wisdom, the knowledge, the government. No other nation like Israel. So the concourse or the dialogue continue, continue. My beloved is Sach. Well, there are those of the Caucasian persuasion will say, do you see the words white? Well, there is no white. No more than there is a black man. The word suck, that you are so dazzling, you are so charming and so glowing. There's such a brightness to your countenance, it's so beautiful. And then it says, and also you are atzmoni ready. You must prove all things according to Torah. We must bahan, we must examine Torah in the lights of Torah. Is not the word ready used there? You are the chiefest among 10,000. It tells of his rush. His head is of the most fine gold, the richest, of the wisdom of Yahshua. The power of creation by this spoken word. His locks, his kid foots, the beauty of his hair. It says that it is tal tal, it is bushy, wavery, and has a great charm to it. And it says that not only that, and it is black, it is shahua. It is beyond blackness, what we call black. It is beyond jet black. It is a blackness that can only be understood by the word hoshach, the darkness, that is beyond peering and seeing any element of that great blackness. And he tells us how his hair looked even as the blackness of an urib. A raven. That's what it says. That's what Torah says. We can only define the word atzmoni according to Torah. No other way. I want to establish that. Because for us to think that there were no interaction between the sons of Yahweh and Esau and nations, we're absolutely wrong, Israel. We're wrong. I want to continue this process because it is vital. I want to identify the wives of Esau. Bereshit 26.34 It says, And Esau was 40 years old when he took the wife Yadith, which is the praises or Yadith. The praises of Yah. 
She was the door of the Ari, the one that had the well, or my well is deep, which was a Hitti. Now we know that the Hitti or the Hittites are the descendants of Cain, Cain, the Canaanites, and also the door of Bushimach, the one that had the perfume and the radiance of the great smell of the fragrance of the beauty of Yah. She was a daughter of Elan, the Hitti, ones that came forth out of the lineage of Ham, the Hamites. These are simple things to Bohan, to examine and prove, her, prove them. It says also in Bereshit 2741, the concourse between Esav and Yaakov. The Torah says that an Esav he sotam, he despised, he hated Yaakov because of the Beraka, the blessings of riches and knowledge, wherewith his Avat bless him with, bestowed upon him, and Esau said in his love, the day of mourning for my father, the death of, your, of my father Yitzchok, it is over. And at that time, he said, I will destroy your home. We must begin to understand that the berith, the covenants that Yah placed upon Yahoo, when he wrestled with the messenger, the Milach of Yah. Your name shall no more be called the supplanter. You will not supplant, but it will be called Yisra'il, Yisra'il, the one that has prevailed. The nation of your own ways prevail against the opposition of darkness. And always uh, go forth in the excellence of Torah. There is a process. I have a teaching on that. And also the lineage of Esau. If you look at his wives, the characteristic, it is far from the concept that many are by their delusion, the teaching. This thesis of religious pontification. We will examine things by Torah. Because through all this process, we can see in Genesis, Bereshit 33, 4, when there was this great agony in the love, the heart of Asa, to destroy Yahweh. It tells us the account. When they met, when Esau, when when Esau and Jacob, when they met, it says that Esau he ran to meet him, and it uses the words chabak, he embraced. Now, here is Esau that many identify as the Edomites, classify them as a genetically coloration of a people. It tells us that these two, and so their thesis that men don't even embrace one that has been identified as what we call, they call, Esau. It says that he, Chabach, he embraced him, not just the superficial dapping, but it was one where he clasped upon him. Embrace him with fervor, with a great strength. And it says that he nafal, he fell and he prostrated himself on his neck, on his savan. He greeted him with a kiss. And he noshak, he kissed him. He kissed him. And it says, and they wept. And they both they well, they cried. There was a bewailing and they cried with tears. It is to embrace and weep. This is what Torah says. 
So there is a teaching that is from the gates of hell that says that the nation of Yah's elect, whom his own brother he must despise and reject. But that's not what Torah says. And in this interlude, Genesis, Bereshit, 33.10, Yaakov with his great ability to give, he says unto his brother, take these gifts. And Yaakov says, nay, I pray. Because Esau refused. Why? Because he had much. He had great riches. He said, but if I've found favor, hafiz, pleasure in your sight, he said, then receive my gifts, my presence at your hand. For therefore I have seen your panim. I have seen your face. I have seen the beauty of your countenance as though this is what he said. This is what he said to Esau. This is what Jacob said. May I read that again for us? Jacob said, Bereshit, Genesis 33.10. And Jacob said, No, I, Pala, I beseech you, I pray with earnestness. If I have found favor in your sight, I want you to receive my gift. Why? He says, for therefore, I have seen your face, your name, as though I have seen the face of Almighty Yahweh, and you were pleased with me. Is that written in Bereshit, Genesis 33.10? Although they were strangers to each other, although there was a great gulf in differences, but this is what, because Yah had solidified the heart of Yahob Israel, that all shall be well. Is there anything that proceeds beyond that? I will give you another account in Genesis chapter 35, verse 28. At the death of Yitzchak, their father. And the day of Yitzchak was 180 years. And Yitzchak gave up the Ruach and his sons Esau and Yaakob buried him. That they both were there. They both were there. It is Yah that has brought about the very fixed judgment and law of Esau and Yaakob as well. And no one can change that. There are those that will treat Torah are words and they will wretch, they will rustle them to create lies and to say this what it means. Especially here in Bereshit, in Dibari, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. Because we see in all of the metroplex, the large gatherings in the cities, you find those that spew a teaching, a concept that is devious, devilish, and from him. It says, you must despise. They don't know who Esau is. They don't know how to identify. Prove it. Prove it to me. If ruddy is the only destructive terminology of Esau, then you must show me the other destructive superlatives of this man that we may find the identity of 
this man. Well, his nature, look at the nature of Jacob and Yisrael. You are set to defend Esau, I am set to defend truth. By truth. Devarim, Deuteronomy 23, 7. This is the command of Yah. He says, you shall not abhor, so I am, to say that one is abominable and filthy and to detest them, to hate them. He said, we should not hate an Edomite. He's telling you that Esau. You know where they were when they were the sons. They were in the mountain of Seir. You know where they were. He says, for they, he is your Ach. They are those that say he meant Syrian. You're a liar. You are a vile, wicked liar. And in hell you shall lift your eyes. You don't add. You don't subtract from this book. Listen to this. He says, he is your up. You shall not abhorred. Well, you know that he's talking about Esau because he's talking about the Egyptians in Misrai. Why? How do I know that? Because Torah proves it. Because you were strangers in his land. Is that understood? I am reading this because in this account, the Torah tells us who are to be shut out from the gathering of the house of Yisrael. He gives us a descriptive identity of those and those that shall not be able to come in to the house of Yah and cannot venture into that house. And he tells us that in Berish, uh, uh, Dibarim 23.7. He shows us. And in Dibarim, Deuteronomy 23.8, this is what Yah says. I want you that identify the sons of Yehuda as the Negroes in America. You that say that Israel, the other Mexicans. And of course, you identify Ephraim as the Puerto Ricans. I want you to identify, prove it to me. Prove it. Now, you are known for your substantial collection of books. I have a few books, not many. Basically, all kinds of rendition of scripture. That's all I have. Dictionaries, pseudopicapha, the old, that's basically it. Because the Torah, in the writing of Torah, it gives me preciseness of all that Yah commanded us to understand. So I ask you, Yisraya, to prove to me, my friend, that Simeon is those that are from the Dominican. Show me in your documentation. That's all I ask. You that by chance may hear this, send me this information. I want to examine it in line of Torah. This is what Yah says in Dibarim. I ask you, is he telling a lie? He commanded through the, through the voice of Moshe. It says in Deuteronomy, Ibarim 23, verse 8. It says, The children that are Yalad, who of them, of Asaph, shall enter into the congregation of Yah in the third generation. Does it say that? Why? Because just like this nation, as it went into Misraim, it integrated Yosef, his wife. Integrated with the varium or the variation of the people of that land. And they produce children and sons and the daughters embracing the men. He said they shall be allowed to come into the fullness of the knowledge of Yah in the third generation. They may come into the house of Yah. Well, you will respond unto me, 
but they are strangers. Let us examine why you said this. You cannot do this with one or two verses. It must take a preponderance of evidence, thorough research throughout the Torah, and it must eclipse your ability to garner the Hitzvi, the scripture, to understand. So I want to begin in a methodical, precise process to show us. Can I do that? I shall, my friends. I want us to examine what it says here in Shemoth, Exodus chapter 12, verse 47, verse 48. This is the Moed Pesach, the gathering Passover. Yah speaks of one Torah for all men. And the congregation of Yisrael shall keep Pesach, it. He uses the word here in verse 48, Exodus 12, 48. He says, and when a stranger, what is a guy? A newcomer? One that lacks the inheritance right of the nation? One that is a foreigner in Yisrael? And one that has conceded one's rights. You have no right in the heritage of Yah. He said, but when that one that is a gear, it is important we understand this. When that one that is a gear, a stranger, he uses the words so, sojourn, one that abides with you, one that dwells in dwells with, remains, one that is a stranger, and one that continues with you with great surety. There is a reason for all of this that I shall read today in one conclusion. When that one that is a stranger shall live with you, and will keep the Pesa of Yah, let all his male be moved. That must be a circumcision. The heart must be in tune with Torah. The mind must be converted. I know that the mole or the bread's melah is the foreskin cutting, but we must remove the foreskin of the laugh. The heart, the foreskin must be removed, Yisraya. He said that this one must be mole. They must be circumcised and let him come near. He must enter in. And Yah says he can... He can guard, he can keep it. And he shall be one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised achril person shall eat thereof. One that is not of the inherited right, one that has not been circumcised, one that has no power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, that one shall not eat. Now this is the emphasis of the teaching. We're talking about Esau for a reason. Yah says that when his sons and his daughters of the third generation, they can enter into Yah's congregation, into the Ukhel, the gathering of his nation. Now in order to substantiate what is in Shemoth, as I began on this great embarkment to reveal unto you with the simple process of teaching, we must have a preponderance. We must have evident after evident where we shall begin the process. The book of Yeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 3. This is Yah speaking unto Yahuda to show or to make Teshuvah to repent of their sins. He says in Jeremiah 4, 3, For this utter says Yah to the men of Yahuda, and Yerushalayim. He tells them to near, to break up, to plow, to till up this hardened, this fallow ground. He says, and I don't want you to sow among thorns because the thorny ways choke out the Torah. Don't sow this among thorns. He commands them, this is what we must do. The same words, mul. Those that are strangers, they must be mul, to give identity to the words mul, circumcised. 
He says, circumcise yourself unto Yah. That's what Yah commanded in Shemoth. Shaul speaks of the same thing, uh, writing unto the nation there of the Yah. Same thing. He says, circumcise yourself to Yah and take away the Ola, the foreskin of your lab, just like the foreskin of a man's anatomy. This is what this mool is. He said, you men of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. He said, if you don't, Shaul said, there are many of you that have eaten of this Pesach. And you're unworthy. That's why many are asleep, many are sickly, many are dead. Because you have been a partaker, you have not the process of the mul, the circumcision. Your heart wasn't right. Well, there are those that have the anatomy circumcised, but their heart is wicked. You think that that's going to bring you in because you have the foreskin cut? And the foreskin of your heart is wicked. You do the same thing the world will do. You will smoke dope. You call yourself having four or five wives. You have uh, a, a, a harem of simple, silly women that do not know the value of their price. There's a profound teaching coming on polygamy. I will teach it soon. Your says, least my fury come upon you like fire and burn that none can quench. Because of your evil doing. The Brits, the covenant that circumcised us. And that's what God does. He circumcised us by this sharp instrument, which is his word. It's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The stranger, the good, those that have no inheritance rights, Levi had no rights of inheritance because these were the ones that purported and strengthened with great knowledge of what Torah brings at the re resolution of all things through the process of Torah. Strangers, the Geir Edomites among his nation, how do we identify? How do we know? I want you, my friends, to prove to me that Yehuda consists of those that are born in this America. And the strange thing that in South America there were more of those of the diaspora than here in this country. It is a convoluted concept that is based upon folly. Well, the Seminole Indians will tell you they were never of any kind of slavery. The North American Indians, they will tell you that. And the Mexicans are adamant. And yet you use what the Barim says and say that they shall come on ships. Well, there was no other way for anyone to span the globe but by ships. Even those of Egyptology can tell you that. Strangers, Edomites, can we identify them among the nation? Look what Torah says, why we must do this. There's a reason. And I will give us the results of that. Listen to this, my friend. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 49, Yah says that my word is so profound that it shall be one Torah, shall be for him that is Ezra. We're born. We're born under the birth of the nation of Israel. We are natives of the uh, of the covenant of Yah. He said unto the stranger the year that sojourn, that lives among the you. One Torah. It's important that we, that one that is strange to the concept of Torah, strange to the knowledge of Yah, that there's only one Torah. No, you keep the Shabbat just like me. There's only one way. You utter the name of Yah. You do not superimpose a damnable lie, Jesus, for Yeshua, just like many will say, prove it. Prove that. You don't do it, Yisrael. He says in verse 50, This did the children of Israel, as Yah commanded Moshe and Ahavran, so did they do it. Now, if Moshe commanded Ahavran, and they did it, 
You tell me this command is not for us? Exodus 12, 49, one Torah shall be for him that is homeborn unto the stranger. Why? Well, we will conclude with why. And the children of Yisrael did what Yah command. Will you say, Re'ach, that is not empirical evidence. Oh, I will conclude with much. Hallelujah. Again, concerning the Shabbat. How is that? Who is that meant for? Yah, we know that that's a sign between the nation and Abba. To remember Shabbat and set it apart as a special day. But let us get an understanding what is said here in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Shemoth 8, 20 and 8. Yah commands us to remember to Zachar, a Shabbat. He tells us to Shabbat keep it set apart as Chadosh. He tells us that six days we have the ability to labor and to do all our work, not some of it, but all our work should be done in six days. There should be no burden on the Shabbat all in six days. He said, but the seventh day is the Shabbats. It is a Shabbaton. It is Yah's Shabbat. Your Abba. See, it is Yah's Shabbat. He said, and in that day or that time, you should not do any work at all. Listen to Israel. He said, you should not do any work, nor your sons and your daughters and your abbot, your servants, your men servants. I want to interpose here. There are many that will say that you can work on the Shabbat because Yah knows that you got to supply the needs of your home. Well, you can't say anything to the damnable pagan Christians. They never keep the Shabbat. And so you tell me you can't work on the Shabbat. These are liars. If a man says he loves Yah, keep not. And keeps not his mitzvah. He's a liar. And you find them today. Well, you don't keep the Shabbat. Tell me what are the commandments. Then if I don't have to keep the Shabbat, I can create my own wicked damn gods. Like you have. I can name him Jesus and Lord. Like you have. I can dishonor my mother. Damn her. Damn my avat. You are liars. And you're going to pay a price. You are liars and you're going to pay the price. He said, not even your servants, your daughters, your men servant or your maid servant. He said, you don't even allow your cattle to pull. Your cattle, he says, nor your strangers. They're those of the persuasion of Judaism, which is a corrupt religious theology that is falsified by this crop damned by mindset. They will say that these are khayim. You can work them. Yah says you don't work anyone. These are liars. They are corrupt. So they work in the stores on the Shabbat. No, Yisrael. Even the wicked Muslims have more integrity. And you bang on the Muslims? No, I come to bang on the ass of the nation that is wicked. The Muslims are not my trouble. The Egyptologists, the metaphysics are not my trouble. It is you that said, you know, Yah, you are the one that troubled his heart. Yah said, don't even allow the strangers that is within your gate. Don't even allow them to work. They may not even understand the Torah of Yah, but you don't allow them to work. This is the rest. The rest. We're within the gate of Yerushalayim. What do you mean? The place, the city, but the Shalom of Yah is taught. But the concept of Yah is taught that bring about knowledge unto him. So none of the yearly more of them, the feasts that we should work or labor, nor even the stranger. Well, we'll let the strangers work our fields because we need to take care of things. Not so. Can I show you that? Leviticus, we yira. Yah says this, chapter 16, verse 29. Yah says, and this shall be a hucha, this shall be an ordinance. It shall be a stature, it shall have no limitation. It is what I prescribe by my own wisdom. He said, this shall be a stature forever to you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, he tells us that we shall, uh, we shall afflict 
Our nefesh. We shall do no work at all. Whether, whether it be one of your own house of Yisrael, the word stranger is what we're going to emphasize, or a stranger, a gear, that sojourn, that goa, one that sojourn with you, abide with you, one that lives among you, one that inhabits your community, and the one that shows the ability to continue, he said, not even the stranger. Not even the stranger. He said, you shall afflict yourself. So the stranger is with you. Not even understanding the Torah of Yah. If one is visiting that is not familiar with you, this is the time of Yah's Moed. This is his Kippur. This is the time of atoning. This is a time to understand the beauty of Yahshua and that there's a bewailing that is, uh, that is an anon that we humble ourselves to appreciate the very dynamics of this power that is in this Uruth, the testimony of Yahshua. This is what Torah commands us. That we must obey. Even in the process of Yisrael, the harvesting of the land, again in Leviticus 19.10, we Yiram. Yah commands. He said, when you have the abundance, he says, uh, and when you began to harvest, he says this. He said, you should not Allah. You should not be so greedy. You should not garner or glean. You should not deal so ruthless to say that I sowed this corn seed. No one else is going to get any of my corn. Yah says, and you shall not glean your vineyard to take it on, to be so wanton and so greedy and so sumptuous. He said, you shall not vine your vineyard, neither shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. Why? Yah says, you shall leave them for the ani, the dal, the poor, those that have nobility. We garden here. But of course, people will not come and pick. You can offer there. Were seasons where people will ride and see the beauty of our gardens, the greens, and us. Can I buy? I would say, no, you pick. They're free. You should not take them all, but you should leave some for the dal. And he uses the word stranger. How interesting. He uses the word stranger. That's an interesting word, isn't it? Those that lack any right, any heritage to that land. Yah said you shall leave some not only for the dal, the poor, but also for the stranger. And then he says, I am Yah, your Abba. I am the one that has commanded you that. So does he command them to leave it for the stranger? So even if Esau is a stranger to Yachumpa, does he have the right to go and pick and garden it from your garden? Well, we will prove the matter out. Hallelujah. Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 33. This is an utterance to the whole house, the nation of his elected people. Yah says this, he says to us, and if a girl, a stranger, ones that are foreign to the nation of his elect, he said, if that stranger go, if he dwells with you, he abides with you, he remains with you, he embraces you, and he has a testimony that he is sure of his election. He said, if a stranger sojourn with you in, listen now, not in a strange land now, but Yah says in your land, in the land of your inheritance right, Yah says to us, you shall not, Yana, you shall not vex a stranger. Yana presents to us, you shall not oppress him. You shall not suppress. You shall not treat violently. There shall be no maltreatment. You shall not treat as abominable and you do them no wrong. He goes on to instruct, but the gear, the stranger, that dwells with you, 
if he dwells with you, if he go, this is what it says here in Leviticus, chapter 19, 33. If he dwells with you, he shall be as one of you, as one that is Ezra, born among you. This is profound here. Look what it says. I want you to hear me. Yah says, and you shall love him as yourself. Does it say that? I will prove why Yah commanded that. I don't need the external resources, books. I don't need that. I don't need dictionaries to understand the construct language, especially the one that I speak. Not well, but well enough. Yah says that you shall love him as yourself. Why? Why? It concludes here, for you were strangers, the same girl. Yeah. You had no rights in Misraim. You have no rights in America, you have no rights in Russia, you have no rights throughout the continent of Africa and Australia to New Zealand. The Arabic slave trade was as massive as any other nation, nations. We're going to do a profound teaching on that, it's coming. He said, for you were strangers in the land of Misraim. I'm Yayo Abba. So do we entreat or maltreat? Do we deal with strangers that's among us? As Yah says, we should not yana maltreat to treat them wrong. Should we do that as a nation? Or do we do what Yah commands? Well, that's not enough empirical evidence, my friend Riach. Well, can I proceed, sir? Uh, in the same writing uh, of the uh, of we Yura to Leviticus 20 and verse 2. This is directed even to one or the nation of those, the people of Yah, as he speaks of the children that curse their parents, those that give their sons and daughters unto Moloch, to Jesus, to the Lord, to God, he says, again, you shall say to the children of Israel, whosoever it is, it makes no difference, of the children of my nation of Israel, or oh, not only them now, you want Israel, he says, and you also the stranger that live among you in the land that gives any of it his seed to the Lord Jesus, to Moloch, to Baal, to the gods, to Baptistism, to Methodism, to Catholicism, to Judaism. He shall surely be put to death. There shall be my, my faith that one dies spiritually without understanding. He said, and the people of the land shall stone him. Can I ask you the question? A question? Did this Statue this Torah applied just to Yisra'el, or did it apply to both strangers and the nation? Read it for yourself. The empirical evidence of Torah far exceeds the historical persuasion by men to present their own ideas, their thoughts, their concepts. What persuaded them? What is the law of their persuasion? We shall proceed in this teaching. It shall be lengthy because I have a preponderance of evidence. Here, Yah speaks to us. As he promised, he gave instructions to the conduct or to conduct the Israelites unto the land of Canaan. In Shem of Exodus 22:20. He instructs them, you that 
sacrifices or zabak to one of these damnable gods. Who? Well, the Lord Jesus. Be'er to any of the gods. You notice among the camps of those that call themselves Hebrews, and I see it from many different types of ethnicities, people. I see it from the white boys just like I do the black boys. And they are so splendid. You got one group on this corner raising hell with that group on that corner. You got the white boys over here don't accept the white boys there. You got the black boys here that rail against those there. Listen to what God says. And they're making their sacrifices. That's what they're doing. It is not the offering that please Yah. He says, he that sacrifice to the gods, the Elohim, unless one offer unto the Yah, the Abba of heaven, he shall be utterly destroyed. He used the words haram, completely eviscerated, without any similitude of one that, that has come forth out of that heritage. He shall be eviscerated, exterminated. Then he says in verse 21, he says, you shall neither the Yana, you shall neither vex, oppress, suppress, maltreat. You shall not vex a stranger, nor oppress. Again, he uses the words uh, lohats. You shall not afflict them. You shall not crush them. You shall not hold them fast and abuse them and bruise them. He said, for you were strangers in the land of Misraim. Yah commands us not to abuse any man, no one. He commands us that. And so we find this, this breed of false concepts telling people to knock the hell out of one, to fight that one, to relegate him because of the complexion of his skin rendition. That's a damned of a lie, my friends. Yah says you don't even... You don't vex a stranger. There's a reason why these men that say that they can identify Manatsa as the Cubans, they are liars. Prove it. Send me your empirical documentation. Prove it. You're going to find those that are of the literary community. They're going to write things whereby they have been persuaded by through their growth, through their association. Makes no difference who he or she is. So the Torah, a stranger can do falsehood and we can and is accepted by Yah. Or is it one Torah? Well, let's look at Exodus 23 verse 8. Hallelujah. Yah says to us as a nation, you shall take no gift. You take no bribes. For the gift blinds the wise. That's what gifts do. They blind those men that are wise. And it says, and it shall not, it will pervert, cause them to be twisted. You got these young men, they're gathering these, what they call the nations of the Hebraic people. And they give them positions and, and they esteem them and they become even more corrupt than the one that is corrupting them. He says, if you do that and pervert the Torah, of Sadiq, you pervert your shoe, you say Jesus is all right. It's a lie. It's a lie. It is a transliteration. You are lying. Well, the name Joseph and Yosef, listen to the listen to the uh, phonics of that. Yosef. Yosef. Joseph. Look at listen to the phonics. And yet Jesus Yahushua. You are a damn liar. You're a filthy liar. You have distorted. Ah, the catalyst here in Exodus 23.9. Again, God said, you shall not oppress a stranger again. For you know the nephesh of a stranger. You have experienced the hardship. 
You have experienced the great injustice and the trials. That's why you never oppress. You have been denigrated. You have been oppressed. You have been shalat. You don't denigrate. You don't do that. Seeing you were strangers in the land of Israel, you will look down upon us dogs, nothing. As the old ones in the cotton fields of the south, they were sing because they knew Kumba, yeah, yeah. Kumba, yeah. Kumba, yeah, yeah. Kumba, yeah. They knew. Because the seed had been sown in them through their forefathers and it was innate in them. Yah says you don't oppress strangers. Look at the warnings of that. You don't maltreat. You don't lochats. You don't do them like that. You do not do that. Yah commands. Is this truth? Can I proceed to that? Leviticus chapter 17, verse 7. This is the command when one brings an offering to be offered at the tabernacle. Yah says in Weyira Leviticus 17, 7. Yah says, and they should no more offer their zabach to the idols or the goats after whom they have gone a hoary. You should not offer their offerings unto the so'iyah. You don't offer your offering unto this damnable goat spirit Jesus. Why? If we're going to be hated for his name's sake, why is it that the Baptists love the name Jesus? The Catholic? Louis Farrakhan? Hindus? Why no one loves the name of Yahshua? Why would you mention that name among the wicked? And those that you call brothers and sisters on the corners, they will stand and listen. You tell them Jesus is a damned of a lie. It's just what it is. It is a creative figmentation of the white's mind. You don't have to buy it's the truth. You can put your dreadlocks on him. You can put your slant Japanese eyes you can paint him in any variations you want. He is a concept of a devious lie, a goat image, because you are some of the most rebellious, hard-headed people upon the face of the earth when it comes to that damned of a lie. And you want to rail against those that you believe are strangers, and yet you do not correct your own self. Continuing here in Leviticus 17, 7, he says that Yisrael have gone whoring after Jesus. He uses the word Zana. He said this shall be a statue forever to them throughout all the generation. Not some of the generation, throughout all the generations. All of the generations. I have a teaching on those things that Yah command us throughout all our generation. There are those that will say, well, you must wear your tassels. Yet they will not keep the feast days. These are the feasts unto Yah. Well, you could only keep it in Yerushalayim. That's what the South Phoenician woman said to Yahshua. For the true worshippers. Worship Yah in Ruach. And, and, and uh, the, the true worshippers of Yah must worship in Yerushalayim. Yahshua says, sure it is. But Yah seek it those that worship Him in Ruach. In the life of the mind of Yahshua. And in truth. That's what He seeks. That's the will of the Abba. Yah says, this shall be a statue forever. Hear this now. And you shall say to them, whatever man there be of Beit Yisrael. You hear that? Weyira Leviticus 17, 8. This is what you must command them. Regardless of who it is. Those are the Beit Yisrael, the house, he says, or of the, yeah, the strangers. Is that what it says, strangers? Sure. Or the strangers, which girl who sojourn among you that offer burnt offerings, uh, Zebach. He said, those that are strangers among you and those that have walked in the light of this testimony, you tell them, you can't call him Jesus here. I will not allow anyone to come here and purport that lie. 
It's a damnable lie. Listen, Yisraya. You say you don't allow that. He says, and if one does that and bring it not to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer it to Yah, even that man shall be cut off from among the people. It makes no difference. It makes no difference who he is. He shall be cut off. She shall be cut off. And he says in verse 10, And whatsoever man that be a beit Yisra'ah, again, whoever it is of Yisra'ah, and also the stranger that sojourn, that go, that lives with you, that walks with you, among you, that eats any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that nephesh that eats dumb and will cut him off from among his people. There is only one blood. When Yoshua commanded, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. They all turn and walk no more. You can't eat the blood of Be'el. You can't drink the blood of Jesus and the Lord's. He said, I shall cut them off. For the life of the flesh is the blood. Without the blood of Yeshua, you have no life of this testimony. And that's why your testimony is Jesus, and Lord, and your damn God. Verse 17. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make a chafa, an atonement. For what, Yah? For your nephesh. For it is the dumb that makes the atonement for the nephesh. It is the dumb of Yeshua that makes the atonement. It is not through Judaism. It is not through Hebrewism. It is through truth. Strangers is served among the nation. What does Torah say? Hallelujah. He goes on to say in Leviticus 17.12, Therefore, I said to the children of Yisraya, I said, I said it to the children of Yisraya, I spoke. Therefore, I said to the children of Yisraya, no nephesh of you shall eat a dam. Dan, if this is only meant for us, what does he say? Neither shall any gear, any stranger that walks with you, that lives with you, that dwells with you, that in cohabitate with you. Among you shall eat the dam. So if we see one that we perceive as a stranger and we see the weapon of death drawn against that one, do we say kill him? Yah says, even to you, you don't eat the blood. You tell the stranger it's wrong to eat the damn pig meat and to eat blood, your blood puddings, your blood sausages. That's what Yah says. Those that dwell among you. Whatever man there be of the children of Yisraeliah, again the redundancy of this, and a stranger among you, which hunts and catch any beast of fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the dam there um, and cover it with dust. He said, "You don't drain the blood to eat. You don't drain the blood like the Messiah warriors, like the British people that eat every kind of blood. You don't do that." It must be drained. No, he did not say hang the meat and let the blood, he says, uh, to be drained and, and to make sure that every vein is moved out. He said you should pull the blood out. When you butcher that animal, pull the blood out. Don't save it to make gravy or sauces. That's what Yah said. He said, I don't care who it is. Strange among you or your nation. He said, for it is the life of all flesh and the dumb of it for the life thereof. Therefore I have said to the children of Yisraeliah, you shall not eat the blood of no manner of flesh. No flesh, he said, you shall eat the blood. You shall eat the blood. Now you can be silly and think that it is this presupposed identity as kosher. And think because you have eradicated every vein, there is no trace element of blood. That is just silly. Yah said, you don't drain the blood to eat. You don't drain the blood to make sauces uh, uh, and creams out of the blood. You make sure you pour it into the ground and cover it with dust. 
for the life of all flesh is the blood. Who shall ever eat that? He did not just say Yisraya. He gave us two identities, strangers and the nation. He said, who shall ever shall eat it shall be cut off, eviscerated. And every nephesh that eats that which died of itself or that which is torn with beasts, you don't eat it. If it's torn with a beast, whether it be of your own country, those that are the heritage rights, they are born citizens of the land of Israel or Israel, he said, or even the stranger, those that are temporary among you, those that are foreigners to Israel, that don't even understand the covenant of Yah, he say, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. We shall be cleansed by the knowledge of Torah. One shall be warned, one shall be shown what Torah says of this matter. One shall embrace the testimony of Hamashiach, and he shall be unclean until the evening, then shall he be clean. But if he wash them not, it is the dumb of Yoshua that wash us and cleanse us, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his own own, his own iniquity. If that is that plain enough? Reach, there is not enough empirical evidence of resources that you're using. I only use the book. And I will proceed with more of this for your learning. In the book of the writings of Leviticus 24, 16. Look what Moshe says here by the command of Yah. When one blaspheme, when one no, when one peers, and your lying Jesus spirit peers, it blasphemes. When one offensively, with great violence against his name, speaks, makes no different who he is, she is. The Torah says, Clearly, Leviticus 24, 16. That's why Yahshua says, when a man blasphemes, he shall, you can do all, you can say all manner of things, but you cannot blaspheme the Ruach HaKodesh. Damn the Holy Ghost lie. It says, and he that blasphemes the name of Yah shall surely be put to death. Who? That name is only given to the nation, is it? He says, and all the congregation shall surely stone that dog as well. Does it say this? You sure? As well as the here, the stranger. As he that is born in the land, when he blasphemed the name of Yah, shall be put to death. So you think, you think that by your own uh, intelligence, you're going to blaspheme his mighty name. You're going to speak evil. You're going to call him and identify him with the God of this earth. And you're going to relegate his name down to a false, damnable hybrid. You're going to allow the strangers to do that? It's amazing. That the ones you call Esau love the name Jesus more than you. They love the name of Jesus. That's why they sing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you say you're Hebrew, but tell me, my friend, why have you changed your name to identify with the culture of the Hebrewism? And yet you call upon a damn Latin freak? Who are the strangers? Why we must intrigue all men fairly. Hallelujah. Well, the 24th chapter, 22nd verse of Leviticus. Yah commands this, not a law that is racism. That's this nation, the laws are so corrupt, so unfair. Yah says, you're different, Yisra'ya. He says in Yira Leviticus 24, 22, you shall have one judgment, one mishpat of justice. One. Not one for the black man, one for the white man, one for the Mexican, one for the Seminole. Look at the Indians in this country. There should be one 
law, one judgment that is just, as well as for the stranger that's commanded unto us as a nation. As for one of your own country, for I am Yah, your Abba, there should be one Yisra'ya, not two. Your judgment should be fair. It should be righteous according to Torah. You judge all men without any partiality. Yehuda Marius, no care the complexion of his skin tone or, or, or the pigmentation, it makes no difference. You say there is one judgment. Those that are truly homeborn or Ezra, Israelite, and those that are foreign to you, but yet they dwell among you, because there's a reason why. It must be one. It must be the same judgment. You must have Sadiq men, righteous men, to make judgment. You can't have these. I watch uh, the, the mindset of these young boys today. That's why they, 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 are, they, they are young men that are so eager that they, they are always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of Torah. Dibari, chapter 1, verse 16. Yourselves as Moshe, and I charge you, Shafat. What is a judge? Well, that governs according to Torah, one that uh, punish or vindicate, one that prescribe or enact the mind of Yah upon every matter. At that time, saying, hear the cause. You must hear the cause. The indifferences, the egregious accusation between your achi, between your brothers. You must hear the cause. He says, and judge Sadiq righteously with the pure heart between every man and his achi, his ach fellowship. He says, and the gear, the stranger that is within your gate. You must judge righteously. One that is an ach and a stranger, the ach accused a stranger. You must have this, you as a shafat, you must have the governing of Torah. You will know who is right. And if the stranger is right, say the stranger is right, you're wrong, ach. If the ach is right and the stranger is wrong, you do that. Yah says it must be a sadiq judgment. It has to be right. He proceeds with this great knowledge that, that, that makes the nation of Israel different than all nations and set them apart from all nations. Listen to this. Dibarim 10.17 For Yah, your Abba, is the sovereign master. He's the ruler over the Be'el, the gods, the Elohim. And he is the master of all masters. Those that think that they're masters, he is the master of all of the supremacy, all of the mastering of skill. He masters all things. He is a great one. He is a mighty one. And also he is terrible, which regard not persons. He doesn't take rewards or bribes. Hear this, Yisrayam. Dibarim 10.18. He does execute the judgment, the mishpat, the fatherless, those that are your tomb. Those that have no rights and no one cares about, no one gives a damn. He just said fatherless. He says, and also of the elma, na, na, the widows, and loves the stranger, and loves the stranger, the gear, those that have no inheritance rights of Israel. Does it say that Yah loves the stranger in giving him food and raiment? Yah is the one that uh, makes sure the stranger has food and clothing. That's what it says in Dibarim 10, 18. And loves the stranger. Yah says, don't, you must execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widows. And loves the stranger. He shows his love by what? By giving them food and raiment. And then Yah commands. I want you to hear this, Dibarim, to 19. Does he say hate? Does Yah say hate? Shane. Yah says Achab. Achavach. He said, Love you therefore the stranger. For you are strangers in the land of Misraim. You were aliens. You were the Nukri. 
you are alienated from the promises of Yahweh. He says, you love, therefore, the stranger. Is Esav a stranger unto the commonwealth of Israel? Where does Yah tell you to hate them? Or to hate him that you perceive is Esau? And I find it from every damnable wicked side. You have corrupted your own mind. Yah says, love the stranger. I want you with the evidence of the preponderance that I will present to prove me wrong. By the same, uh, uh, the same amount of proof out of Torah. Well, he doesn't intend for us to love the strangers. The same law is applicable to the stranger as well as to the nation. Dibarim 14.29 He says, And the Levi, because he has no part or no inheritance with you. See, listen to this. He says, and also the stranger. He categorized the stranger and the Levi in the same uh, same uh, construct. He says, and also the stranger and the fatherless and the widows uh, which are within your gates, within the, within the comfort of, uh, of Yah's covenant, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that Yah your Oba may bless you in all the works of your hand which you do. Did he differentiate? He says that Levi and even the stranger shall come and eat. From the abundance of your riches, he shower upon you. He did not make any differentiation. And you that do that, woe unto your wicked. Nefesh, you shall pay. There are those that will say, well, these strangers that they perceive as strangers cannot be a part of the modem. Can we prove that correct? Let's see. Divarim, the remedy. Chapter 16, verse 10. One of the most prominent times of the season, it is uh, what we call Javuts or Pentecost, Feast of Weeks. It says here in uh, Debarim 16.10, Who can come to the yearly more than? Debarim, Deuteronomy 16.10, He says, You shall keep Chag Javuts to Yah. Your Abba, with a tribute of a free will offering of your Han. That's how we must do it. Which you shall give to Yah your Abba this tribute of a free will offering with your Han. Which you shall give to Yah your Abba according as Yah your Abba has blessed you. He's given you much blessing greatly and much. And he tells us we shall rejoice before Yah, your Abba, you. Is that what it says in Debarim 16, 11? You, your son, your daughter, your men servant, your man servant, and the Levite that is within your gate. He identified every classification in every group. He separated the men servant and the maid servants. From the Levi, from your sons and your daughters, he says, and also the strangers. Did he identify the girl, the strangers? Did he identify the Levi? He said, also the strangers. Also the strangers and also the fatherless and the widows that are among, that dwells with you, that are among you. Those that are within your gate, among you. He says, in the place, Yah, your Ba, while you in the land of Yerushalayim, has chosen to place his name. Where has he placed his name? Only in the true remnant, in the heart of his nation. The land, that strip of land that we call Israel, is a land of such corruption. I will teach on the kingdom of David that include all of Canaan. From the land, from the great river of the Nile to the great Euphrates. There are those that tell you 
Go to Yisraya. Can you imagine an influx of 20 million people there? How does the land even feed the people? This is an ignorant generation. No, it's not by Yah. That's telling people to do that. Well, you love this Gentile soul and hell. Those that say that, they rely upon the resources of this Gentile soil. How do you know that? Because you ask those that are Jews who they rely upon. They rely upon the communities of New York and Phoenix and Los Angeles and San Francisco in this damn Gentile nation here. The resources come from the four corners of the earth. From Russia, from China, those that identify with Judaism. So how do you feed 20 million or the fucks of 20 million people in that little strip of land? Desert. Tell me. This is an ignorant generation. Yah is going to bring his people together. Don't worry. You stay where you are, you that listen to this broadcast. Don't let these ignorant people seduce you. They have no confidence in that. They have to still redraw, draw from the resources here. The communities of those that are there, they are still beggars from America. They got businesses here to reap revenue there because they cannot do it there. Listen to this. He says in Debarim 1612, And you shall remember that you were a bondsman. An ebbet, you were those that were slaves. You were under bondage. Where? In the land of Egypt, Bisraim, he said you shall observe to do all these statutes. Where were the statutes commanded for the strangers within our gates and the fatherless? It makes no difference who you are. There's one Torah. They all must obey the commands of Yah. We must understand that. We must have men that are uh, wise enough to understand uh, every line, every precept upon precept. Can you see the fashion that I'm going in? I've given you preponderance of evidence, and there's more to come. Well, what about Hag? Uh, what about Pentecost? Dibarim 1614. He says, and you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your sons. We shall rejoice at the time of Pentecost. We will gather here for the new year of Yah. We have never celebrated the new year, but this year we're going to do it. The beginning of this new year. Colorful event wonderful things I will prepare and cook. And we're going to have a great time. Colorful expression of the beauty of God. So he commands us at Pentecost that we should gather our sons and our daughters. He also identifies the manservant, those that serve us faithfully. The manservant, he said, and the maidservant, and the Levi. And he also gives us Another identity and a classification of people. He says the stranger, the girl, and the fatherless and the widow that are within your community, your gates. Is that what Yah says? Do we, as a nation, you will wear your tissels? But this is not valid. And the word sik, sik, or the tissels, they're only identified in scripture a few times. But this word stranger, the evidence of it, it is preponderant. And they will say, and they'll say, you're wicked, you don't have on your seek, seek. Well, I have on the garment of Sadiq. I wear the clothing of righteousness as my mind is covered to the Torah. Where there are some difficulties, controversies, what do I do? Divarim, the Torah says in the 17th chapter, verse 15, Yah says, you shall in no wise, you shall in no wise, set him king over you. Who? Well, whom Yah your Abba shall, shall choose. Who shall we choose? One from among the Achim, among the Ak, shall you set as leader over you. You may not set a stranger over you, which is not your ach. That's what Torah says. Those that are the strange ruach, you don't come allow them to come in and rule in the house of Yah. You got those that have been faithful. You're going to let someone that is foreign 
Let the Torah of Yah come and preach the damnable light Jesus and use Lord and God. It cannot be so. Cannot. The Torah of Yah, His justice, His kindness, His generosity is the same. It is unparalleled. Ibarim 24.14 Again, Yah commands us, You shall not O shach. What is O shach? Oh, I know we know everything. Yah says you shall not oppress. You shall not violate. And there are those that are Jews that say you can violate and defraud. You cannot through by the subtleties of deception to extort and to do wrong. The Talmud tell them uh, you can take from those that are Gentile, but Yah says you shall not oppress. You should not press who a hired servant. You hire someone to clean your house. And you treat them wrong. They ask, when you take off the more of them, they must work. You are a liar and you don't know young. You don't oppress the hired servant, nor the poor, nor the needy. You don't do that. Yah says, whether he is your ak, your brother, whether he is your chot, whether she is your sister, you don't, whether he is your ak, he say, or of your strangers that are in your life, within your gate. So you hear those say, you're going to serve us and we're going to treat you like this and you're going to be our slaves. Yes, says, in your land, you don't do that. This same Torah is applicable now as it is when he restored his nation. Yes, says, you don't do that. This is corrupt. This is corrupt. The vile, venomous deception of lies that are going forth. Yah says in the 15th verse, At his day, you shall give him his hire. You do it right by him. You don't work one 15 hours a day and pay them for eight. You do it right by them. You shall give him that is just he said, neither shall, shall the sun go down upon it. You don't wait till the next day and ponder and try to cheat them. You do it right by there, for he is poor. And set his nephesh upon it. Least the cry against you to Yah. And it be sin to you. You do it right by all men. The Torah commands us, as much as we have opportunity, do sadiq by all men, especially to the house of Yisra'ya. Why? Because you don't know who you're entreating. You see that stranger, you say he's a, he's a salva, he's a Hittite. You don't know who he, you don't you have no power. Well, I know how in the hell do you know? Please tell me. How have you how are you so precise in your identity of someone? That, because his skin is black. Well, his skin is white. He's a Mexican. You're an ignorant man. You are stupid. You're beyond the realm of stupidity. This is what Torah commands. This is what Torah commands. In the 24th verse of the same chapter, verse 17, Yah says, you shall not nata. You shall not pervert. You don't bend the judgment of a stranger. Does it say that? I hope, I pray that you that join this teaching, this broadcast, that you're following along with me. You do not pervert the judgment of a stranger, nor the fatherless. You don't do that. Nor take the widow's remnant to pledge. You don't take that little poor woman on food stamps and welfare. You fat, greedy pigs of hell. You lying Christian dogs. You T.D. Jakes of the world. You faggot Eddie Longs. And you, you Jewish pets. You take the widow's last morsel to tell her that she's going to get $10,000. You are a dog. You are a wicked cripple, dollar. You are vow, Kenny Copeland, a damned of a Benny Hen. You damn Christian thumpers and you Jesus dogs, what you are. I don't take one word back. You know where to find me. I'm not difficult to find. I'm on the internet. We have a very large website. 
and Jefferson, South Carolina is not difficult to find, and you will know me when you see me. So Yah says you don't pervert, you don't not bend the judgment of the stranger. You don't do that. There are dogs. Then what are you? This is Torah. Has nothing to do with my emotions, my feeling. I proceed further in the 19th verse. When you cut down your harvest in your field, we harvest here. One writes to me one day, well, your tar is supposed to be of your veggies and stuff. I say, do you grow a garden? You're so, people are so immature. When you cut down your garden, we cut down our field. We cut down our sugar cane. We cut down our corn. Feed it to the animal. He says, uh, when you cut down the harvest of your field, and has forgotten a sheaf in the field, you forgot, oh, we got to get that patch. You should not go again and fetch it. Leave it alone. I leave stuff in the garden because Yah commands us. My Achim will tell me, especially Okshamri, he says to me, and Ach Yosef, you don't know how to do it small. Well, even if we have a bad harvest, uh, at least we will garner something. My plants are in the greenhouse for us here, thousands of them, to set out broccoli and Brussels sprouts, uh, 700 different types of cabbages. I know we won't eat them all, but we dispense that. We give it throughout the community. It shall be for, why you don't get that last cabbage? It shall be for the stranger. Boxing, you all may say to me, well, let me take something to the stranger here. Take it, my friend. We're not going to eat all this. We can make sauerkraut. We can make kimchi. We're not going to eat it all. We can freeze and eat until you get tired of broccoli. Yah says, you shall not fetch it. He did not say, it shall be for the achim, it shall be for the stranger, the gear, those that are temporarily inhabiting the gates of Yerushalayim, foreigners unto Yisrael. Yeah, we're not familiar with their, uh, their ways and their activities and their ideas. He said, it shall be for the fatherless, and it shall be for the widow, that Yah your Oba may bless you in all the works of your and see, this is how the nation of Abraham, this is how men shall know they're blessed. This is how, because of their righteous actions and deeds that Yah command. And if we do not do it that way, then woe unto us. Well, my friend, I, I want to discuss with us as I proceed. Can I talk a little? Are you all listening? Please inform others of this teaching. It's going to be quite lengthy, but it is a wonderful teaching on a Shabbat evening to listen to, to be instructed. May I deal with the first fruit of the blessings of Yah, how they are to be distributed? How do we orally uh, do what Yah commands us? Can I begin here in the book of Devarim? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 11. Yah commands us that we shall rejoice in every tough thing which Yah Yoba has given to you. Everything I've read to us has been given by Yah, so we should rejoice in it. You should not get mad at me. He says, and to your house... You, and also, although they have no inheritance, right, the Levi. He says, and also the stranger. You rejoice in those that are among us. Shall see the great rejoicing uh, that's in your bosom, not your view or the, or the vile nature of your attitude. He said, they shall see it. That is among you, the strangers that are among you, that live in your community. They shall see the greatness uh, of your strength in you, that when he causes you to rise, you book of Yiltava. That's what Yah command. That's what he commands us. Why Yah? Because there's a process. 
that even among the nation of Yisra'iyah, he said, in the third year of the tides, this is what shall be. Tibarim 26 to him. When you have made an end of the tithing of your Asa, he said, all the tithes, not some, all, of your increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it to the Levi, just only to the Levi. You see, people will say, well, we're tithing the rent for the Levi. Sure was. Yah says also the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, that they may eat within your gate and be filled. This is what men say. I have them, but ties are done away with lies from hell. As Yah commanded in Melchiah, he cursed the Kohen because they're not given honor. So you curse without giving tithes. It's just the same word. Same wording, same phraseology. You can take it the way you want to. It's the truth. He also says in Debarim 26, 13, Then you shall say before Yah your Abba, I have brought away the Kodesh things out of my house, and I also have given them to the Leve. Look, not only did he give that great gift, the tithing, your great gift of strength and beauty, your great wisdom. He did not just give that, hallelujah, to the Levi, but he says, look, to the stranger and also to the fatherless, that they are all, you tell me that, yeah, he bunches the stranger with Levi, they have no rights. He said also to the strangers as well and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all your mitzvah, your works, which I have commanded, which have commanded me. I have not transgressed your mitzvah, neither have I forgotten them. So Ramon doesn't operate like your commands. He has transgressed the very truth of Yah. And he has forgotten the law of separation for the nation. And that caused them to be above all nations. And to be different. That is the truth. In the regards of Yah's administration of truth, is there a difference between the stranger and the homeborn? Let's bring some clarity to that. Yah says in Tibarim 27, verse 19, he uses the words Ara, Ara, Nathami. Curse is he that Nata that perverts, that deflects from what Torah says, that deflects the true judgment, that curse is he that perverts the mishpat, the judgment of the stranger, the fatherless, the widows. And all the people shall say, say so be it, amen, amen. When a man construe the judgment of those that are defenseless, and have no rights. He is a man that is cursed. His mind cannot operate and function in the living Torah of Yah. He has no power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yah said that. Yah said it. You're in trouble. And that's a fact. You got to stand before Yah. You're wicked. Your damn Jesus may tell you that, but Torah doesn't. It doesn't. And there's a season that Yah says in the seventh year the Torah is to be read. Every seventh year. Well, the Torah should be read, and on the seventh day, the Shabbat, it calls a nation to bring the perfect gift unto Yah. So Moshe speaks by the stature of Yah Dibarim. 31.10 And Moshe commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, it is the appointed time of the year to release at Chach Sukko. When all Yisraeli is come to appear before Yahyobah in the place which he has chosen, he said, And you shall read the Torah before all Yisraeli 
in the Uzin, they should be able to hear. They should be one to read and to stand as the Qim, they should be able to hear. He tells us in Dibarin 31 12, he said, Gather the people together. Men, women, children, and your strangers. That's what he says. The Gidea. He gave us the classifications of who to gather. It's within your gates that they may hear. Why? That they may learn. They may learn. And fear Yah, your Abba, and observe to do all the words of this Torah. He said all. He did not say have a special reading for the children. He said bring them all together. You'd be surprised how children discern things. That they all may hear the reading of the Torah. So when you gather in the bed, you gather them all together, children. And when strangers that are not uh, of your commonwealth of knowledge. This is what Torah says. How do you say to those that you say an African, they cannot come into that filthy whorehouse where you get drunk, you drink like damn fat dogs. These are fat, greedy men. The shiftless and lazy, fat men, big bellies, guts like hogs. No, you can't come. You from Cameroon? You can't come. You from Tanzania? That's a dog is there. Y'all say even the strangers within your gate. What does that mean? That means that one that comes within the confines of this truth. They're not resisting and fighting. You tell me that they cannot come into Yah's house? Well, Yah says even the sons of Esau, as they're the third generations, they can come. And you see a man, you say, where are you from? You tell me, you have to ask a man where he's from to know what he is? You tell me you can't look and discern, you discern everything else, and you can't tell. You are a wicked child of hell. You. A wicked dog. Please pass this alone. I want enemies. I want to fight. I love to fight. I do. The Torah. Here is a reading here in Yahushua Benan. Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 8, verse 30. Then Yehoshua built an altar to Yah, the sovereign Abba, the master of the nation of Yisrael. He did it on the Mount of Ebal, the Stone Mountain, not Stone Mountain, Georgia. I want to drop to the 32nd verse. And he wrote there upon the stone a copy of Torah of Moshe which he wrote in the presence of the children of Yisra'ya. And all the children of the Yisra'ya and the Zachim, the elders, and the officers, and the Shafats, and Shafatim, judges, they stood on the side of the Arun, the Ark of Covenant. And on that side before the Kohen, the Levi, listen now, on the same side, whereby the Kohen stood, the Levi, the Kohen, the Levi, which bear the Ark, the Aruma, the Aruma of the Brits of Yah. Also standing on that side, also, not only the Kohen and the Levi, it says were the strangers, the Gair, that were born among. Half of them over against Mount Gezerim. That's what it says. And half of them over against Mount Ebal. As Moshe, the servant of Yah, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Yisrael.
And afterwards he read the words of the Torah, the blessing and the cursing, according to all that is written in the book of Yah. Do you hear that? He read on the blessings and the curses. Were there strangers? Sure there were. Then Yehoshua ben Nun Joshua. In chapter 835, there was not a word of all that Moshe Sava commanded, which Yehoshua, listen, read not. Read not where? Before all the congregation. Anyone else there? Well, the congregation of Israel with women. The women were there with the taff, the little ones that suck on the titty, and also with strangers. They were all there with strangers, foreigners, that were Halak. They live the same lifestyle among them. They walk like the sons of Israel. They had the same mind. They live in the same matter of lifestyle. So how do we get this perverted teaching today? It's not a teaching. It is a religious thesis of lies. Oh God, I say to you, my friend, prove to me you that will say, prove it. Prove to me that Lazarus was raised from the dead. Prove to me with your external material that this one that you call, quote Jesus, died on what you call a cross. I can prove Yahshua HaMashiach. He was impelled on the stake. Well, because I live, there's a Torah that lives in me. I don't need external books. It is in the book. And you will say to others, prove it. Prove it. Prove it. I'm proving. Your theses are based upon lies and the twisting and corruption of Torah. That's what it's based upon. And I'm proving it through the order of the books or the sefer. I'll show you something that's vitally important. When Abraham purchased the burial ground for Sarah in the book of Yesha, it says, and the life of Sarah, uh, Sarah was 127 years. In Sarah she died, and Abraham rose up before his uh, rose up before his dead to seek a burial place to bury his Ishaw Sarah. It says, and he went and spoke to the children of Heath, the inhabitants of the land, saying, this is what I, Abraham said. He said, I am a stranger. Is it the same word, Gear? He said, I am a stranger to give us profound clarity of the identity of stranger. He said, I am a stranger and I sojourn. Listen to this now. These were the people of Heath now. Yah gives us command how we deal with strangers. Uh, now Abraham said, I'm in a strange land. Uh, he says, and I sojourn, I live with you in your land. He asked them, no fun, give me a possession or of, of a burial place uh, in your land that I may bury my dead uh, before me. And the children of Heath said to Abraham, behold, the land is before you. In the Choice you choose of your sepulchre. Bury your dead, for no man shall withhold you from burying your dead. Did he identify himself as a stranger? And even those of the land of Heath knew. And there were those that understood even the Torah of Yah. Is it the stranger that's dying that we perceive as a stranger? Do we 
give him the fruit of the food of life? Should we must swan? There's a reason. I will conclude. There's a profound prayer of Yishalomu. After he had built the bed of Yam, the invitees, the guests, the honorary. And the Torah tells us here in the book of 1 Kings 8, chapter 8, verse 22 and verse 23. And then I want to proceed to verse 39. It says, And Shalomo stood before the altar of Yah in the presence of all the congregation of Yisrael Yah, and he spread forth his hands toward Hashemah. And he said, He identified the great and sovereign master of his nation, Yisrael Yah. He said, No damn the betrothed God is like you. There's nothing that dwells up the heavens that are above you and great like you. Nothing in the earth or beneath who keeps this brit, who guards it. And you do it with your chassid, your great kindness, uh, your steadfast love kindness, with your evet, your evidim, your servants uh, that walk before you with all of their love. They must give you their love. The dialogue continues. To verse 39, Shalomo says to Yah, then here in the Shemayim, he said, I know that's your dwelling place, and I want you to forgive us, and I want you to as our fashion do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose love, whose heart, you, Yah, that you know, for you, even you only, no, see, only Yah knows. He did not say, just Yisra'ya. He said, only you know the Levi, Levi'im of all the children of men. Only you know. You know their heart. That they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our Avats. How amazing this is because he says in verse 41, he identifies a group called strangers. First Kings, first Melachim, 841. He says, moreover, concerning a son of Yah, concerning a girl, a stranger. That it is not of your people, Yisra'ya. They are not of Yisra'ya. They have no right, no knowledge, but they have come out. They have journeyed from afar, from a rohuk, from a distant, from a far land, from a strange doctrine. They have journeyed from a distant Iraq country. The word Erech commands a distinction of every corner of the earth. They have come for your name's sake. He's talking about strangers. They have come, they have been intrigued. He says, for they shall shemak. Who is he talking about? Strangers. Strangers. For they shall hear of your great name. And of your strong hand, and of your stretched out arm, and he shall come and pray toward this house. Strangers, you tell me, strangers are allowed to come and pray toward that house? Shalomo. And there are those that will say, You're from Cameroon, you can't come. Unless you're from America, unless you're from the islands, unless you're Puerto Rican, you are a damn wicked liar. You all don't understand what I'm saying, but you will when I conclude. He says in verse 43, there's one thing that is consummate with the true name. It will draw his nation. So that's why strangers will come. You don't even know who they are. You don't know Yisra'ya. Prove 
that Yahuda is here in America. Prove that Levi is in Haiti. Prove to me that those that are Manasseh are the Cuban. Prove to me that Gad is the North American Indies. Prove it. With all of your superlious evidence of books, prove it. You can't. You're a liar. And no liar has any inheritance in the kingdom. You are a flat out damn liar. Hallelujah. Well, there are those that will get upset with me. They're cowards and they will post things. Uh, and they don't understand that I have the ability to lead it, but I don't mind your criticism. I know who I am. You do too. That's why you will listen. Look at verse 43 of 1 Kings 8. Here in the heavens, the Shema, I'm your dwelling place. And do according to who? To all strangers. Do according to all strangers. Calls to you for. The stranger cries out. He said, do according to all strangers. Why, yeah, that all people, all people are nations. But the earth may know your name. Those that have journeyed from the far distant land, they hear your name and they cry out. And he says, when they pray in this place, when they come to Yah's bed, gather among the nation. And when they pray, do. So they will take it back to the distant land and say, He lives. He's the great Abba. To fear you, as do your people, Yisra'ya, is that they are not a distinct demarcation there, strangers in Yisra'ya. That's the reason why. And that they may yada, they may know that this bed, which I have built, is called by your name. That they may know that that people are the elect of Yah. That they have the insignia, the oath, the truth with them. Let it be so, Yah. Let it be so. Strangers, Isa, Idumi, and the strangers, who are they? May I proceed in this derrach, a prayer of Toda of David's here in the book of First Chronicles, First of Dibriha. Yahim. It says in First Chronicles twenty nine, verse ten. And, and because I want to expedite this process, I will drop down to verse fifteen after I read this. It says, "Wherefore David he blessed Yah before all the congregation, and he says, Barach is you Yah." Bless me, Yah. Ya Araba of Yisra'el, Araba, forever, Olam, forever, Viat. He is our Araba forever. And then he integrates in this pala. He says here in verse fifteen. Now, does the word stranger identifies with his people? He said, for we were strangers yeah, before you. And we go, we journey, we dwell, remain in your Torah as well as all of our fathers. Our days on the earth as but a shadow. And without permanence, we're not going to be here forever. Again, even as Abraham in the land of Heath, he calls himself a stranger. David calls himself a stranger. A land of or without inheritance. So is this, Yah identifies in this teaching, he identifies a nation Yisrael, he identifies strangers, he identifies widows, he identifies fatherless. Now there are those that would twist this. 
They're so conniving like Hashatan because they don't dwell in truth. We're going to continue. What are the most or a Tehillim a psalm that day David reads for his own delight his heart? Psalms 146 verse 9. It says that Almighty Yahweh, He preserves the strangers. He preserved the strangers. Now we have seen in the process of this teaching that there is always a demarcation between the strangers and Yisrael. He preserved the strangers. Uh, he relieves the fatherless uh, and the widows. Uh, but the way of the wicked, uh, he, uh, he turns upside down. He perverts the wicked. When men are wicked, He gives them perverted wisdom. It is sensual. It is earthly. They worship the creature more than the creator. There are those that call themselves Hebrews. As I said, I hear from all sides. I hear from those that are Mexicans say that, uh, and I have in the past say that, you, the, the Hebrews only mark Mexicans. Hmm? I hear from the white boys. I hear from the black boys. I even hear from the Jewish boys. One called me one day and said, we believe that you are Hebrew. I said, I don't give a damn what you believe. I don't need your credentials to identify me. Listen to our Abba. He is precise. How sure you are? Well, I have a profound scripture here. The sins of his nation. There has been the catalyst for the captivity or the Ushibi of his people. And what nobody could speak it with the greatest of simplicity like Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 7 verse 8. <clears throat> it says, And the Torah, the word of Yah, came unto Zach Zechariah, Zephuniah, saying, Yah says, This speaks Yah. He is the one of Sava." Saying, he said, I want you to execute true judgment. I want you to see things with true mishpat, with honesty. He said, I want you to show the steadfast love, kindness, and it only comes through true, true judgment. I compassion, he said, with every man to his brother. He identifies a class of people. He said, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless. Again, he says, nor the stranger, nor the poor, least none of your imagined evil against his brother in his heart. You should not do or create this kind of sin practice. It has caused you to be bound, taken into captivity, without any resolution at all, but by the hands of Yah. And he says unto Zechariah, but they refuse to hear, and they pull away their shoulder, and they stop their ears that they should not hear. Who? Well, the house of Ephraim, and also the house of Yahuda. Is that what the people are not doing today? Those that say the Americas here, America is the house of Yehuda, well then they have no fellowship with, uh, with, with, uh, with Ephraim. It's a separate house. Prove it. All I ask you to do is prove it. Prove it. Show me as you can prove other things by your historical references. Prove it. Send me the material. Send me the uh, scholarship. You cannot. And you are a liar. And no lie is going to dwell in the presence of Yah. That's a fact. That's a fact. Hallelujah. That's just a fact. Can we deal for a moment here from the book of Bimit's Bar Numbers? In the book of Weyirah. The book of Weyirah. Uh, 
Leviticus. Hallelujah. Now there are things that your commands us not to allow the strangers to do. And they cannot participate. That's why we need discerning eyes and men that are careful. And those that are truly gifted of Yah. The book of Leviticus 22.10. Yah said there shall be no stranger. He used the word zur. Strange women or prostitute or harlot. Those that are spiritually harlots and prostitute. You should not allow that woman's spirit of this Jesus lie to come in among the people. And tell them that it's alright to use Jesus and and every kind of dander but twisted rendition, trans lie of the name of the son of Yisrael. And those are the Zur, they are enemies of Yah. That's why he said, there shall no stranger eat of the Kodesh things. Why? Because they have prostituted themselves. You don't let someone come that call upon the damn name of Jesus and have the Pesach with you. This is not a gear, but he says, and there shall no Zur, no stranger, and strange woman, those that have prostituted themselves, those that are harlots and foreigners of Yah's truth, the enemies of Yah, those that are profane, they shall not eat the kod, 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 Kodash things. He says uh, also, and a sojourner, who is this? A, a to shop. Those that are temporary, those that are mere largest, they are aliens, they are strangers to you. Of the Kohen or an hired servant shall not eat of the Kodesh things. And so the definitives of the words in our forefathers' language, they have a vast difference. The meanings are distinctly different. And identity, just like we say the word to T O, T double O, and also T double O and T O O. They're vastly different. Listen to this in Leviticus 22.10. But if the Kohan buys another person a nephesh with his money, he may eat of it. If he buys someone. If he buys another individual, he may eat of it. And he that is born in his house, they shall eat of the pure thing. They shall eat of the Torah. In essence, you have a stranger that has worked for you for years. And in that house, they're born those. Yah says they can eat. Of the clean things. They can consume the living body of Yahshua. If the Kohan's daughter be married to a stranger, she may not eat of any offering. You tell me one of Levi and their daughter marry a stranger? They may not eat of the things. But if the Kohan's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned to her father's house, as in her youth, she may eat of her father's meat, but there shall no stranger eat thereof. There shall be no one that is a zur, a prostitute, one that sell your shoe for a damn lie like Jesus, one that sell the heritage of Israel for a damn lie. They may not eat Israel. They may not eat of thereof. And if a man eat of the Kodesh things, unwittingly, then he shall be put to the fifth part thereof. And it shall be given to the Kohen and the Kodesh thing. They shall not chala, they shall not profane the Kodesh things of the children of Yeshua, which are offered unto Yah, or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespassing. When they eat the Kodash things, for I, Yah, do Kadosh, I set apart them. Strangers, Zul, prostituting spirit that sell Yah out, you sold him out for Jesus. You cannot eat the pure things, you cannot eat the things that are set apart of Yah, and you're prostituting his word. You selling it like the Baptist whore, the Methodist whore, the Catholic whore, the Muslims whores. They're not afraid of the name of Jesus. You're not hated by because of the name of Jesus. You're mocked and laughed upon, but you're not hated. 
You don't need it. Can I proceed? Hallelujah. Yah says this. This is the first time that the word is strange is used in Torah. In better she Genesis 15.3. We must understand. I've been dealing with strangers, have I not? You don't know who the tribe of Yahudah is. You don't know that Reuben is the Seminole Indians. You don't know that it's Nepila that, is, that are the Argentinians uh, to Chile. Isn't that amazing? Huh? And Asha is the Colombians and the uh, uh, the Colombians uh, people. And you don't know who Simeon is, the Dominican. You don't know that. Prove it. Prove it, you liars. Give me the documentation that you have, and you have no doubt in your interpretation. Send me that. If someone's listening, pass this along to other groups, whether they're white, Mexican, black, Jews. Please tell them to send me this documentation. You can't even tell me who your great, 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 great... Do you know how many grandparents or great-grandparents you've had in the last 2,000 years? Just figure it out. Sit down one day. I've done that. It is so many. You, you, how do you tra even trace the DNA? And these liars like these, this dog group that are out there in the Utah, the Mormons, uh, that can trace the lineage of everyone, these are liars. And people buy that because they're so gullible as hell. Uh, they're stupid. And they buy the lies. The Jehovah Witnesses love the name of Jesus. Why is it that everyone loves that name? The damn honky tonk celebrate Jesus' birthday. Because he's a damn dog God. He's a goat God. Can I proceed a little farther? I shall, whether you buy it or not. First time the word strange is used. Genesis 15, 13. And Yah said to Abram, this is what he said, now listen. He said unto Abram, know of a certainty or a surety, your seed shall be, listen now, not, he said, a, a stranger. He said, your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them and shall afflict them for hundred years. Now there are those that will tell you that, well, we got 800 years. Y'all did not say 800 years. Those that are in the Americas, you know, they're going to be affected another 425 years. That's a damn lie. That's a lie from hell. They should be a stranger. He identifies the land, stranger in the land. And so there are those that they purport this lie and people are so stupid they buy it. A stranger. I'm dealing with the word girl. Stranger. Hallelujah. I'm dealing with that word. That one word, stranger. Genesis 17, 27. It says, And all the men of your house, Abraham, not some, all of them, born in the house and bought with money of the stranger, they were circumcised with him. They were more, even the strangers. You're going to be a stranger in the land, but yet Yah identifies a people. He identifies those that are of the house of Yisrael. As I read in the book of Yeshua, how Abraham sought a place to buy for the burying ground of Sariah, and Yah blessed even the people of Heath to grant unto him as he identified himself even as a stranger. That is what Torah says. Even Yaakov, when he departed from Laban in Bereshit, Genesis thirty-one fourteen, it says, And Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there yet not another portion of inheritance for us in our father's house? And look what they said to him. They said unto Laban, Are we not counted? him or are we not counted of him they use the word strangers what does that mean Gare? it is the words uh, we are asked to him foreign women we are asked to our daddy Laban as whores and harlots ones that are unfamiliar as a prostitute 
We gotta have some kind of clarity of the language of our forefathers. You don't have to speak it, you just have to labor to understand certain things that you must search diligently. That's Nukri. For he has sold us and has quite devoured also our money. They said that's what he has done. He has taken from us, we are Nukri. We're strange we as prostitutes under him. He, we have no identity under him. There's a difference. It is a total difference. Yisrael, hallelujah. Well, we should marry strangers. We're an ignorant people. It says here in the book of Shemoth. Exodus 2.22. We're talking about Sipura, the daughter of Yitro. Let us see what Torah says here in Exodus, in the book of Exodus 2.22. It says, And she bare him a son, and she called his name Girishan, or Girishon. Those that are exiled. Why? For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. That's what he said. So he gave his son the name that identifies the marriage of a people into a strange land, Yisrael. And because of that, Yah renews his great covenant with his people. Shemoth, Exodus 6, 44. Yah says, And I have also established my Brits, my covenant with them. To give them the land of Canaan. See, not only that the strip of land, where's the land of Canaan? I will teach that soon. He said, also the land of Canaan. The land of the pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. We're strangers here, Yisraya. Well, if we're strangers here, he has given us this land. We just must go take it and possess it. But Yah said, I will give you land flow with milk and honey. He sent those out from each of the tribe, two men. And they come at we can't overtake it. Yeah, I said, what a childlike mentality. Strangers, the gear, strangers of Yah. Those that have no inheritance right. Those that were born in captivity. Yah says, Yisrael, Yah, you're not like the Goyim, the nations. He says, at my year, not this pagan year, not the strange event we just celebrated. I did not, and you did not. And this is when Yah began to institute the Pesach. Exodus 12, 19. He tells them, for matzvah seven days shall there be no matzvah, no leaven found in your house, in your ruach, no wickedness, no vile, no perversion. Whatsoever you eat that which is leaven, even the nephesh, whosoever eat anything that is leaven. Now look what Yah says. He says, even that nephesh shall be cut off from the congregation of Yisraeli, whether it be a stranger or those that are born in the land. Is there a distinct demarcation and an identity of separation here? Is it? You can see the differences there, can't you not? He gives us two different categorizations of people. He gives us those that are strangers and those that are homeborn. He says, and if one eats, even as Shaul says, he said, they shall not, that one shall be cut off Yisrael. And we must understand that. And we must do things according to Torah. We have these young, ignorant men today, and they're young. They're easily persuaded. They are ones that it doesn't take much to convince them. And they run like wild men without examining what they are running with. They have not exercise. They have no knowledge of the righteousness of Yah. None whatsoever. Period. Listen to this, Yisrael. We must. We must understand. But Torah says, 
We must. Exodus 12, 47, 48. I've read this, but it says, And the stranger that sojourns, that lives with you, that core with you, shall keep the Pesach of Yah. It tells us that all the males shall be moved. And let him come near, and they shall keep it, and shall be as one that is born in the land. Is that, or is there great clarity to that? Is there confusion in just what I read? There's no confusion. It is easy to be understood. Why? Because in the 49th verse of the same chapter, one Torah shall be for him that is homeborn. One Torah shall be for him that is uh, uh, Ezra, those that are homeborn native, those that have come out of the soul, out of the mindset of Joshua, and to the stranger that live among you, that lives among that sojourn, that lives among you. No different than the Shabbat as Yah speaks in Exodus 20 and 10. But the seventh day is the Shabbat to Yah, your Abba, and is you should not do any work, your sons, your daughters, your men, your maidservants, nor your cattles, nor your strangers. You have those that are Jews who will work people on the Shabbat. These are lawyers, Israel. Yeah? There are those that say, those in America are the real Jews. Well, I'm not a Jew. Jews are law, there is no word as a Jew. How are you going to say Jew? Yehud, huh? There's no Jew. Hallelujah. Yah gives us wisdom as how we should conduct ourselves in the land of Canaan. Exodus 22, verse 21. Now this is what this deals with in the land of Canaan. Exodus 22 verse 21. Yah says you shall neither yah, you shall not oppress. You shall not treat wrong, Yisraya. You shall not maltreat. He said a stranger, a stranger. There's a reason why you cannot. You don't know who Yisraya is. You don't know because of the because of the pigmentation of the skin. You, that's a lie. You don't know. He said you don't mistreat a stranger. He says, nor do you lochat him, for you were strangers in the land of Yisraeli. Why are there so many verses on dealing with strangers in the book? Preponderance of it. You're not identified of people that have been ingrained and integrated into, into the world's uh, activity of mankind. That's wrong. Now, those that despise those, they call Africans stinking and dirty. Well, hell, my friend, you that are big and fat, you're stinking too. Dirty, stinking Africans. Dirty white boys. I defend truth. And these big, fat beefaloes, uh, pigs they look like, big, fat, funky people. I've seen them disregard people. Speaking Africans, dirty Africans. I've seen it too many times. And they're the ones stinking. 100 degrees with all this hot gab on, the gab is hot. And they disregard. Yah said, you don't vex, you don't treat a stranger wrong. You don't know who you're dealing with. Well, we are your hoorah right here. You're a liar, you don't know. Send me the documentation. All I want you to do is prove that to me. You say you prove that this land is Misraim, Egypt, for another 40 years captivity. Prove to me, please. Prove to me with your documentation. Uh, they don't tell me uh, about the books uh, that you have read, uh, uh, Babylon, Timbuktu. Uh, don't, don't give me that. Prove to me. Prove. Now, those by their own persuasion, uh, they can qualify and qualify and qualify anything they want to. There's only one book I look to qualify, to quantify, and to codify. Anything I say, this book. And I must understand the language of my forefathers to understand words and their meanings. And I proceed. You don't vex a stranger because we were strangers at one time. The 23rd chapter of Exodus, verse 9. 
Again, Yah says, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the nephesh of a stranger. How do you oppress one? How do you say to the Africans, you dirty, smelly Africans? How do you say, look at them pig white folks, uh, and look at them pig Mexicans, uh, and look at them pig black folks. If you say you are the true house of Israel, yeah, know that you are a stranger, you understand that. You people in great bondage, understanding the oppression and the deprivation and the depraved mind of those that oppress them. How do you say to another, you're wicked? Yah says you don't oppress the nephew of a stranger. Send you were strangers in the land of Mizraim, and they oppress you. And you cried out, and Yah heard your cries. Something is wrong with these damnable lies that these men are purporting. In every city you find them, on every street corner, yelling and hollering. You don't even cast a purse of, a purse of Yah before the swine. Give that which is Kadosh to the door. And these people, you know, they, they this is what he commands us to do. There's only one command for us to do. It is found in Gilead, chapter 14, verse 7. That's what we need to do. Yah's going to save his people. He's going to save his whole house, Yisrael. Can I proceed further in this? Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are those that call themselves Jews, and they will, that own the cattle markets of the world, cows and hogs die, and they still sell it to the people. But this is what the Torah said, and yet they say they're Torah people. And these are, the, these are the renowned men among uh, the synagogues of hell, uh, among their Knesset, their wicked assemblies. The Torah says in Leviticus, he says, And, and whatsoever man therefore of the house of Yisrael, or a stranger, see even a stranger that lives among you, that eats any man of blood, I will even set my face against the nephesh. And that eats the blood and will cut him off from among the people. This is what Yah says. This is what Yah says. There are those that the beasts die of themselves and they will still sell that to the market of the people. Well, we're Jews, so we don't eat it. We sell it to strangers, all right, to give it to the Kohim. Listen, Yisrael, Leviticus 18, 26. Yah says, you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgment. You shall not commit any of the abominations that I have named. Neither any of your nation. He's talking about Yisra'ya. You don't do that which is unseemly and wrong before Yah. He said, nor any stranger that sojourn among you. Even the strangers among you cannot. You No, our judgment is pure. You cannot do that. Why? I will give us the resolution. I said, this is a lengthy message. My body is feeling the effects of it. Some two hours. But I want to do this in the entirety here, Yisra'ya. You can sit on the Shabbat and listen to this. We will play it. You can download it. Pass it out to friends. Let them hear this. Even my enemies, that's all right. Those that call themselves Hebrews, they don't care for me. I had a letter from one to write me and say, the Hebrew group said they don't like you. I understand that. I'm not offended. I don't like myself at times. Hallelujah. Torah is of great compassion. It is predicated upon compassion. The Hasid of Yah. Can I show us an example? Leviticus 19.10. Where you are. Yah says, and when you shall not glean, and you shall not glean your vineyard, neither shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and stranger. Those that are poor among the nation, you shall leave substance for them. And also the stranger, I am Yah, your Abba. Why? Because everything Yah says is just. And the Torah is just to man, Yah made man. Leviticus 19.33, Yah says, And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not vex him. You hear those individuals say, we're going, you're going to be our slave and we're going to beat the hell out of you. And all of that foolish frivolity, childlike principles, Yah says, even in the land of Israel, you don't vex the stranger. 
This Torah is going to be the same book even in the land that we're going to abide by. He said, but if, but the stranger that dwell with you shall be to you as one born among you. Is that, what does that mean? Are you going to, are you going to change that, my friend? Are you going to tell me it's not talking about Esav? Esav was a brother of Jacob. He said, and you shall love him as yourself. So do you hate the stranger? You damn crackers here, you niggers there. I don't even like to talk like that. Well, I know I say damn and damn the gods, but that's you damn dirty Africans, you funky, stinking Africans, you damn Arabics. You hear that all the time. It's not of you It's a damn lie. Please get this out. I'm not a popular man. I don't have the avenues like others to spread material. You that listen to this, did it out to those that call themselves Hebrews, the Mexicans, and the white boys and the black boys. I yes, said, you shall treat them as one of you, and you shall love him as yourself. You need to hate the cracker and the nigger. You all that offended at the N-word, I will apologize for that. I do. I don't like using I don't use it. It's not part of my vernacular. He says, for you were strangers in the land of Mr. Aim, and I am Yah, your Abba. Is that the truth? Or is it a lie? Tell me. Also, he says in the 20th chapter of we get our verse 2. Again, I say to the children of Yisrael, whatso, whosoever of you be the children of Yisrael, or strangers that dwell with Yisrael, that gives any of his seed to Melak, shall surely be put to death. Now, he tells us that the strangers that are part of the community of Yisrael, and they offer up unto Jesus Christ, they shall be put to death. That's who Melech is. They shall be put to death. The people of the land shall stone them with stoned. You don't integrate them into your environment, your company. This is what Yah says, Yisrael. Even the stranger cannot offer unto Melech, unto the gods of darkness. You can't even allow that. I'm coming with preponderance of evidence. I'm coming with scripture after scripture after scripture. We're dealing with one aspect, strangers. Esau, the Edomite, strangers unto the land. Are they? One topic, one topic, and one topic along. And no other topic at all, Israel is just one. Just one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I uh, offer up a wisdom here? This is the sin offering. Hallelujah. The sin offering of a nation. Our sin offering. We know Yorkshire has paid the price. But the Torah says in Bimit by Numbers, chapter 15, verse 26. It says, and it shall be forgiven of all the congregation. The offering of the sin, offering of ignorance. We didn't know. We don't know. We didn't know that Jesus was a lie. You can purport a lie. But the Lord God was a lie. He says, and it shall be forgiven uh, all the congregation of the children of Yisrael. Just them. Be met by Numbers 15, 26. And the strangers that sojourn among them. Seeing all the people were ignorant. Even the stranger had no understanding of this offering before Yah that was wrong. He said, even they shall be forgiven. There's a reason why. The 29th verse of the same chapter. You should have one Torah for him that sins through ignorance, they didn't know. You don't know. You don't know Jesus is Allah. You hear this, you know. He said, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and the strangers that live among you. One Torah. If the stranger among you sin unknowingly, the same law, same judgment, same, uh, same judgment, it is the same for him as it is with one that is birthed under the umbrella of the covenant of Avram, Isaac, and Yaakov, because you don't know who they are. But the being that does all presumptuously, those that say, well, I, I think I can do it, Yah says, whether he be born of the land, again, or the stranger, the same reproaches, Yah. You tell me the same death, same judgment, or the same? The same shall reproach, Yah. That's what he says. 
and that nephew shall be cut off from among the people. You tell me you just cut the stranger off? Yeah, I say you cut them both off. They both shall be damned. Why? Because he has despised the word of Yah and has broken the commandments of Yah the Mitzvah. And that nephew shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Yah say cut them off. Stranger, homeborn, is this law just? So how can you say to the African, you dirty stinking African? How can you say to others that whose skin complexion is different than yours, that you are dirty pig? How is that? When Yah commands you not to. These simple minds are easily persuaded. It doesn't take much. And that's the truth. The offering, the cleansing, one of the most profound things among our nation was the bird offering or the red heifer, wasn't it? Can I show us something? You're reading, but you're not studying. It says here in Bemith Bar, Numbers. Numbers chapter 19, verse 10. And he that gathered the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes. He shall be unclean until the evening. And it shall be to the children of Yisrael and to the stranger as well that dwells among them for stature forever. That's what the Torah says, my friend. Though that touch those things that are not commanded by Yah that we ought not to touch, there's a process of cleansing. And it's only through the very process of the washing uh, uh, of the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yah says the same Torah same structure for stranger and those that are home born. He goes on to say, listen, a place of refuge. Your names and he gives the people. There were six cities. Was it just for the Hebrews? The just of Yah's Torah. Be made by Numbers 35, 15. Yeah? Yah says these six cities shall be a refuge. For who? Both for the children of Yisrael and for the stranger. You tell a stranger kills a Hebrew. And those that sojourn or to shop. And those that sojourn, they're distinguished. There's a distinguish between them and the citizen. Again, Numbers 35, 15. The six cities shall be a refuge. Both for the children of Yisrael, come. Uh, this is a compound statement. The, and for the stranger, come uh, and identify the state of the people that sojourn among them. That everyone that kills any, 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 any person unawarely, they may flee there. So if a stranger kills a Hebrew, uh, Unawarely, he may flee to that city. If a stranger does offense against Yisraya, he may flee into the city. What city? We are the cities of Yah. We are the light that sit upon the earth. Our light cannot be hid. When the salt has no flavoring, it is tough for nothing. It is best to be thrown out and trotted on the foot. We are a city. So even strangers that have done something unjustly with injustice without knowledge, they flee to us and ask Yisrael, those that are, have the light of the power, the testimony of Yeshua, and they can find refuge. That's what this is saying. Exactly what it is saying. They, they do something without the knowledge of that matter, they have a place to flee. They have a place to run to. They have someone that they can talk to and be guided by and understand what Yah commands and what He forbids. They can know that without a shadow of a doubt. Hallelujah. The book of Yahushua says, the book of 
Joshua 29. The appointed cities. These are the cities appointed for all the children of Israel. For the stranger, for the sojourner among them, and whoso kill any person unaware may flee there and not die. So you get on the corners and say, kill the strangers, bust their heads. You are a coward jackass. You're not going to kill a fly. You put someone in a position to spend the rest of their life in prison. Why don't you do it? Coward. And yet that's the rhetoric of many. Bust his head. And these cowards not going to hit a fly. He said, and they may not die at the hands of the vengeance blood until they have stood before the congregation. So how will the congregation judge one? When one stands before the congregation, is it done with partiality or impartial judgment? No, it's done by the way Yah commands. This is Torah. This is the book. This is not the speculation of Reach David Yisraya. I like my Hebraic name. Even on my driver's license, I tried to get them to put Hebrew there, but they, in this state, we don't do that. Listen to this. This when Yah came to Abraham in a dream, Abram in the book of Jubilee, chapter 14, 13. You know the details of this. It says in the book of Jubilee, chapter 14, verse 13, this is what the Torah says. And it came to pass when the sun had set that at an ecstasy fell upon Abram. And he was surprised uh, a horror of great Hoshek darkness fell upon him. And it was commanded, said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be strangers. We forget the most important thing, his seed shall be stranger. So to those that have developed their own concept of what is truth, they see others that they believe are outside of the realm of their identity. They call them strangers, a queen. Yah says you're going to be strangers in a land that is not theirs. And they shall bring them into bondage and afflict them 400 years. He did not say anything about 800 years. And again you shall be brought. We are all brought on into the Misraim or into the Coptic of all. We're so religious. The people of, uh, of the hue of skin complaint. They're so religious. It is what they That's why you got Baptist, you got Methodist. Huh? That's why you got all of that. And that's what the Torah says. That's what the Torah says. It's the law of Yah's Torah truth. I like this incident in the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 2, verse 10, with Boaz and Ruth. And when she began to glean from his fields, when he approached, she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes? He was willing to pay the price for her. He was, a not, he was not the kinsman next in line for her. That you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Seeing I am a new Kri, I'm unfamiliar. I'm unknown of you. We have no connections at all. We don't even know each other, but yet I am a stranger to you. Why would you even take knowledge of me? Why would you even show me any kind of regards? Why? Who are the blessings of Yah created for and given to? The prophet Yeshua Isaiah, he gives us a tremendous regard in that that we are commanded to keep the precepts of Yah. And what that will produce in Isaiah 56, 3. He says, neither let the sons of uh, strangers. He uses the word nechah. 
those that are aliens, foreigners, and shown of strange, that have joined himself to Yah, speak, saying, Yah has surely separated me from his people. Let not the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Is that what it says here? That's exactly what it says, yes, I am. And then I drop down to verse 6 of the same chapter. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to Yah to serve him. Strangers serving Yah? A dirty, black, stinking African? A dirty, white boy, a dirty, Jew boy, a dirty, Arabic? And also the sons of stranger that joined themselves to Yah to serve Him and to love the name of Yah. Well, no African can love the name. No white boy, no black boy, no Jew boy. This is what the Torah says. This is what the prophet says. To love His name, to be His servant. Everyone that keep the Shabbat, that guard the Shabbat from polluting it and take hold to my covenant. This is what Yah says. Isn't that beautiful? Look what it says now. Even them, even then will I bring, God says who? I just named them strangers that join themselves to sojourn, that love the name of Yah. He said, even then will I bring to my Kodesh mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their zabak shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Why? That's the reason he said that. I know these twisters, the word all is called in the Aramaic or the Hebraic language. Call the substance, the mass. He said all people. He did not say Hebrews for all people. And I know how there are those that are so convoluted, they will twist that. But you can't twist Torah. My house should be called our house of prayer for all people. That's an important reason. And we will come to the conclusion of that, Yisrael. We will come to the resolution of all of it. Well, God doesn't forgive these Africans and these... Uh, you don't know what an African is. No more than you know who uh, is a Levi. No more you know oh, who is Esau. You don't. Listen to this from Yeremiah, Jeremiah. This is the promise of Yah. His pardon to who? Well, I'll read what the prophet said. It's either he lied or you are a liar. He says in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 10, only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against Yah, your Abba, and has scattered your wicked ways even to the zoo, to the strangers on the every green tree and you have not obeyed my voice, says Yah. Have we obeyed Yah? Have we scattered our ways? Even to the zoo, the strangers, those that are unfamiliar with Israel. Yah. Those that are in countries that are unfamiliar. His people, He scattered them. He puts, He scattered them. If you want to understand what scattering is, do me a favor. You got a little money. Plow up a piece of ground. It doesn't take much. Raise bed. And you get Caesar, the one family, what they call Braska, a Brasia. And that's cabbages, broccoli, cauliflowers. You take one, a, a little handful, uh, not a handful, but 10, 12 seeds of each one of those and get 12 different kinds. And put them in your hand and close your hand. And then you got soil or even in your house and carpet, plush carpet. Make sure they work out of carpet. And they're all of the same color. They're black. They're all dark. And you scatter them. Go find the seeds. And tell me which one is the broccoli seed. Tell me which one is the gypsy broccoli. Tell me which one is the marathon broccoli. Tell me which one is the Dutch flathead cabbage. Tell me which one is the uh, Jersey Wheatfield cabbage. Tell me which one is the Charleston one. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. That's why these liars don't know who Yahudi is. Please, you all, get this out. Let others hear, all right? Hallelujah. Let others hear. Yah says to us, the prophet speaks the same thing, Yeremiah, 
as even Moshe speaks, Jeremiah 7, 6, Yah says to his nation of people, he says this, if you oppress not the stranger, the gear, and the fatherless and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after the damned of the gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever. Behold, the problem is you trust in lying words and cannot profit. So if we were trusting in the living Torah of Yah, if we trust in these, these uh, pseudo teachings of lies, why are we not, why are you not prospering? I'm teaching on that. You need to visit the website and listen to those messages on the Yithron, the prospering, the prosperity of Yah. Hallelujah. Not the lies many and teach. This is truth. Man cannot prosper out of the Torah. And that's why many are not prospering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Yah commands us here in Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 3 that we must operate in the Ruach of justice regardless. And if we do not obey, there should be a great price to pay, destruction. Jeremiah 22 3, this is Yah speaking, this is Yah. He said, I want you to execute judgment and sodiq, righteousness, and deliver the spores out of the hands of the oppressor. You do that. That's how you deliver the spores out of the hands of the oppressor, that you judgment and righteousness. He says, and do not go and do no wrong. Do no wrong against the stinking Africans, the dirty black boys, the stinking white boys. Do none. He says, and do no violence. Do no violence unto the stranger. So you're telling someone to bust the head of those that you call strangers? Yah says, do no violence unto the stranger. The fatherless nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place, in the place whereby you have been set apart to honor him. That's what Yah says. So you're telling people to bust the heads of strangers? How would you do it? You do it. You don't have the wherewithal to do it. Your game in no action. That's all you are. Nothing behind your rhetoric. None whatsoever. I have begun at the better sheet of the uh, at the beginning of all things, and I'm, I'm uh, methodically moving my way through the whole book. That is a deal with strangers and what Yah says to do. Hallelujah. Yah commands us and instructs us. By the mouth of Yeskel, Ezekiel, the prophet. He said, I want to tell you something, you hypocrites. You pretend you love me, but you don't. Ezekiel 14, 7. For everyone of Bayat Yisrael, of the house of Israel. Make sure you turn to that when you listen to this. Follow along with me. He says, for everyone of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that lives with the nation, which separate himself from me, and set up your idols, your Jesus, your lords, and your God in your heart, and put a stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and come to a prophet and inquire for him concerning me, I will not answer him by myself. So it makes no difference who you are. And so I got to get an answer from the prophet. I need to hear from Yah. Yah says your iniquity is your stumbling block, whether you are Yisra'ya, whether you are a stranger. This is what Yah says, Yisra'ya. It is not what I say. It is what Yah says. And if Yisra'ya, we're going to be favored by Yah, we must hear what he says. In order to understand, I want to read one verse. But you must begin in the book of Yeska, Ezekiah, the 39th chapter, to understand this, this scenario here. But there's one verse I want to read here in Ezekiah 44, 6. Yah says, you shall not say to the rebellious, even to the house of Yisrael, thus 
says the sovereign Yah, O house of Israel. Let sufficient, let it suffice you and all, uh, all you of your, all your abominations. Now hear this now. I will continue here. Hallelujah. In verse 7. Yah says, in that you have brought into my Kadosh place strangers, uncircumcised in heart, uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house. When you offer my bread and fat and blood, that they have broken my covenant. You can't break the covenant of Yah and think that you are circumcised in heart. He said, they have broken my covenant. This filthy bread, this vile bread, he said the bread, he said the fat and the blood, they have broken my covenant because of all your abomination. They have been wrong because of your sin, because of your lies, what you are spewing and what you are saying. They have done wrong because of your wickedness. Yah says in Yeskel Ezekiel 44, 8, you have not kept the charge of my Kodesh things, but you have set keepers of my charge and my house for yourself. Thus says Yah, the sovereign one, no stranger. Look okay, at who it is. No stranger. There are those among Israel, Yah, are strangers. Uncircumcised in heart. Uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary. Or any stranger that is among the house of Israel, Yah, because you have become so abominable and so vile and so unclean. And you have caused those, because you have gone after every kind of damn God. How many types of, let me say this, how many types of white Jesus do you think you have? You have the poor white Jesus. You have the rich Jesus. You have the prejudiced Jesus. You have the Ku Klux Klan's Jesus. How many black Jesus you have? You have this little splendid group over here, that Jesus. You have the tassel group over here, that's their little Jesus. You have those that the women dress like whores, their little Jesus. And because they got them, their tassels down to their ankles. That's the kind. Well, there must be rights to every man and strangers alike among the nation. Yes, Ezekiel 47, 22, point that out. And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance. You shall divide things to you, just to us and to the stranger that lives among you, which shall beget children among you. And he said, and they shall be to you as born in the country among your children, Yisra'ah. Those that are born among you live and work and eat and labor. They shall be just like the children of Yisra'ah because they are. Why? They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Yisra'ah. Now there are those that will fight that. This is what the prophet said. And what many of these men will do, they will try to steer you into their low ways that they have practiced for years. And I watch sometimes, I don't pay much attention to it, but it's easily to, to defend what is truth and right. It's easy. Verse 23, And it shall come to pass that in what tribe, the twelve tribes, isn't it? What tribe the stranger live with, that shall you give him his inheritance, says Yah. That's profound there. How do you explain that, house of Judah, Levi? How do you explain that, God? In all the emphasis, especially these from this nation, they will never say that they are those that are of Israel in Britain, in Russia, in China. In Africa on their continent, in Australia, in Spain, they won't say that. Sweden, it's only in the Americas, and they're liars. And then there's the other corrupt seed that will say that it's only Britain, America, you're damn liars. And then there's a vow seed that say that they're Jews. That's the only house. You're damn liars, all of you. You're damn liars. Hallelujah. You shall give the stranger his just reward. We must execute true judgment and steadfast love kindness on every man 
his brother, a stranger, makes no difference. And that's the truth. Your shoe is coming. I'm going to close out this as far as the covenant of Abraham the prophets, the books of wisdom, the Torah, from the book of Melchia, and then I want to venture into the Brit Hadass of what we call the Renewed Covenant, quote, the New Testament, unquote. Melchia chapter 3, verse 5. And I will come near to you to judgment. This is your sure speaking in the first person. He says, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer, against the adulterer, against false, false swears, and against those that, listen now, oppress the hireling of his wages. You Jews in New York and around the world that oppress those that work for you and keep back the wages. You oppress the widow's little poor woman trying to take care of family. No husband. You oppress the fatherless. Y'all said, I got something for you. And then turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, says Yah of hosts. You do that? The right of the stranger is written in the Torah. And you turn him aside and say, you're goim? You're white boy, you're black boy, you're stinking African? You're wicked. And in hell you shall lift your eyes. Does the Brit Hadassah says, Anything about this? Moving quickly. The Torah says here, Matitiya 2535. Hallelujah. 2535. Yoshua says, For if I was hungry, for I was hungry, and you gave me meat, I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Does he call himself a stranger? He said, I'm a stranger, and you took me in. This is your sure. Who is the stranger? Why do you identify with the stranger? Why? He goes on to say in the 38th verse of the same chapter, you say, when did you, when did we see you as a stranger and took you in? Or naked? And we clothe you. When? For the experience of time, verse 40 of the same chapter. And then the Melach, the king, shall answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, Insomuch as you have done this unto one of the least of these, my Achim, you have done it unto me. Those that you know that, and you got all the wisdom of whom this one is. You have identified every tribe. You know them. I ask you, my friend, please, any of you all, you of these distinguished groups, you're not going to search the net to hear me. Someone pass along say, please, hear this crazy man. Down there, a southern boy, Jefferson, South Carolina. Send me your documentation, please. On the identity of every tribe. Send me your distinguished map and routing of how they were separated within the boats and all Yehuda came here. Well, 99% of them. All Levi in Haiti. Can you do that for me? I would appreciate any of y'all doing that for me. If you got some DNA uh, analogy, I'll, I'll take that too. Because you are the ones that say you must prove all things. You haven't proven a damn thing. And you white boys, I want you to do the same. And of course, you Mexican boys, you all do the same thing. Hallelujah. The great confrontation with Yeshua and Pilate. May I read? Can I? Oh, I shall. It says in the book of Matthew 27:7. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field. That's what they did with the 30 shekels. For what? To bury strangers in. Were these strangers of the commonwealth? 
With these Hebrews? Without identity? You don't know the identity of the Hebrews. You don't know them by your calculation. Well, they bear strangers. Well, there is a profound incident where one of you all that loves to prove things, prove this to me. It says in Luke 17, 18, as Joshua cleansed the ten that were of leprosy, the ten tribes of Israel, they were not found that returned to give honor and praise to him, save this one stranger. Who is the stranger? Do you know with absolute Esau? Who is the stranger? But there was only one stranger. Just even the word stranger, S-T-R-A-N-G-E-R, I've used that throughout this teaching. I have not conformed to rather fit what I would teach. I have pronounced this word in every verse I've read. No one but a stranger. Who? Oh. Even when your show appeared unto his Talmudim in Emmaus. Let me read Lucas 24:18. It says, And one of them, uh, whose name was Cleophas, answered and said to him, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem? And has not known the things which have come to pass in these three days. Now he's talking to Yahshua. He didn't know him. One of the commonwealth. But you going to tell me who? Those that are not and those are? You're a liar. You're a filthy liar. So who gives us an account here in Athens? In the book of Maaseth, Shilishia, Acts 17, 19, it says, And they took Shaul, and they brought him to Agrippas, saying, May we know this new doctrine, wherefore you speak it. And you bring certain strange things to our ears. See now, the word strange now, to our ears. And you... And we would know thereof what these things mean. They hadn't heard this. Anyone that hasn't heard the power of the testimony of Yeshua, it is strange, they're strange. And then it says in verse 21, For all the Athens and the strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. All of them. Strangers. Well, what happened on the day of Pentecost? Were there not strangers? Uh, let me read that. Can I? It says in, in the same book, chapter 2, verse 10. It tells and identifies the people that were there. They were from Phrygia, from Pamphylia. It says in Misraim. And they were from parts of Libya. But they're Africans and they're dirty. Were there Hebrews in Libya? Were there Hebrews in Sarin? Were there strangers of Rome? And then it identifies the Yuh uh, Yahudim. Also proselyte. A newcomer or a stranger. They were aliens. You men are liars. You're going to pay. You don't even know who Asaf is. If you're going to take the word ruddy or at Moni, then David Shalomo Yahshua got to be a son of Esau. There were strangers and proselytes. You see how men twist things and defile many? Even Shaul writes to the great great gathering of the Ephesians, Ephesia, chapter 2, verse 11. He said, I want you to remember that you being in time past uh, Gentiles in the flesh. Who? He's talking to the nation. You were Gentiles in the flesh. You did the same thing as the dirty Gentiles. You were filthy. Who are called uncircumcision by 
that which called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time you were without Hamashiach. See, we were without the knowledge of Yahshua. Being aliens, strangers, from the commonwealth of Israel, listen, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no tzikvah, and without Yah in the world. But now in Yahshua Hamashiach, you, you, you who were sometime afar off are made now by the blood of Yahshua. What is this? As I come to this ceasing of this long teaching, you don't know where Yisra'ya is. He is scattered. And so when you entertain strangers, you don't know who you entertaining. That's all we have to be aware of how we entertain strangers. Because we have entertained the word Similak messengers unawarely. And so you don't know when. That's why you must do just by Torah to every man. Because you're dealing, you don't know who these were strangers. They didn't know you. Men don't know the power of that name. 19th verse of the same chapter. He said, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of Yisrael, Yisrael Kudushim, and of the household of Yah. You don't know who you're dealing with. And so Yah scattered his nation among the strange land, the strange people. That's why you don't know. So the pigmentation of the skin, you can't identify them as Esau or Yehuda, a Simeon or Levi or Manasseh. You don't know, my friends. They didn't even know Yahshua. They called him a stranger. Even the Talmudians didn't even know him. When he got up, they didn't know him. That's wicked. It's wrong. It's vile. That's why the law, the Torah that is so righteous, is supersede every man. The, the law of wickedness cannot hold us down. The law of vile and treatment cannot reduce a nation that has prevailed. You're wicked. You're wrong, man. That's the truth. So all right, sons of Timothy, um, with the profound directive to give him understanding of much. And he speaks to him as how we entreat the poor and those. Same rule of Sadiq throughout what I've read. First Timothy at chapter 5, verse 9. He says, let not the widow be taken into the number on the three score years, having been the wife of one man. He said, woman that is well reported of for tough work. Now this is her. She had brought up children. Held the women today that were they thinking about some sexual drive. Listen to this. She had brought up children. And it said, if she has large strangers, what stranger? So you say, now if this word stranger only deals with Yisra'ya, then why is there a distinct demarcation between the, those that are homeborn and stranger? Answer that. Those that have large strangers, if she has washed the feet of the Yisraelite Kedushim, he talks about the strangers and those of the house. If she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed, followed every of mitzvah, the works what Torah commands, who are the strangers? Why must we entreat the stranger? Wash the feet of the stranger. Because you're washing the feet of Yisrael. You don't have the clarity to identify nothing. They didn't have the clarity to identify Yeshua. They're not, this generation didn't even have the clarity to identify a prophet. That's why you got so many self-made ones. The letter to Ibram Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. He's talking about those that waited for the promise. The Dabarim to be fulfilled in Yahshua. They all died in Imuna, the Imun, the faith of Yah, waiting, seeking. Having not received the promises, but seeing them afar off, they were persuaded of them. They were persuaded, even though they were far off, and they embraced them. And they confessed them. And they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. The whole nation of Yisra'ya were strangers and pilgrims. 
we're strangers and pilgrims. That's why Yah says, I want to give you a Torah to the stranger. There are things that they can eat because they don't understand the value and the importance. They must be taught. And that which come forth out of them, we are strangers. They were strangers and pilgrims journeying through this earth. That's why you can't do that, Yisrael you can get out there and call them filthy. A faggot is a faggot. A dog of a woman is a whore. She's a whore. But you don't know who you're dealing with. Even the Hebrews said that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. That's what they said. That's why we're reminded by the same instructions. Hebrews 13 to Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Why? For thereby some have entertained the Melachim, messengers of great strength, unawarely. You don't mistreat people. And Hepha speaks unto the nation of the people of Yahweh. First Peter, Hepha, chapter 1, verse 1. And he gives a salutation and a great extolling of the rich blessings of Yah through Yoshua HaMashiach. He identifies himself as a shulish ach, a messenger, uh, an apostle of Yah, of Yahshua HaMashiach. And then he says this, that's why we must be careful, Yisrael. He says to the strangers, and there are those that will say, well, we know that Saul sent this to the Gentiles. And then they will say, Kepha was sent to the Hebrews. Why would he address them as strangers? He says to the strangers scattered. Puts. Throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, he had his father land of Asia. And he says unto Bithynia, strangers now, scattered by the hand of Yah. Now isn't that the teaching of all Gentile whorehouses? You know that's the teaching. That even the nations that Shaurit wrote to were the Gentile. There was a reason I will teach on that one day. You got to understand that we were Gentiles in the flesh. And that's what Israel has always been. It was just not to the Pacific of what we think is a Gentile. Getting back to Kepha, he said, you elect according to the foreknowledge of Yah our Abba, and set apart by the Ruach to the obedience of the sprinkling of the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, the free had merit, love, and favor of Yah shall be multiplied. Was he writing unto the strangers? Or just the sons of Ibram? He says, strangers. Did he call us that? Sure, he called us strangers. He called us strangers scattered throughout. The full assurance of the riches and the blessings of Yah. He also tells them in chapter 2, verse 11, he calls them dearly beloved. He said, I beg you, I beseech you as strangers. That's who we are, strangers. We don't walk as the norm of the nation, strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the net. Fish, strangers, how do you know the identity of Yahuda? I want you to tell me, and they all are here. This is a forest, it's false, it is a lie. I ask you all to challenge what I teach, challenge my words, challenge my scripture evidence. It's either the truth or it's not the truth. Challenge it. Show me where I'm wrong. I want to conclude this long teaching with a profound utterance. Shaul speaks unto Gaisha, those, Yakahan, Yakahan, chapter, a third Yakahan, verse 5 of chapter 1. Hear this carefully. He called Gaisha beloved. You do faithfully whatsoever you do. He identified two classes of people to the Israelite, 
Shaykhim, the brothers, and to the strangers. Who are the strangers? There were those that were among him that they had all the zeal, the clothing of the true Yisraelite. And there were those that he encountered that were strangers to the commonwealth. So he says, you do faithful unto all men. Strangers, even men that had profound wisdom, they couldn't identify those that were the house. Oh, there were some distinctive marks that they could see what this, I don't know. Because they become so integrated into the societies around them. And to do it by the pigmentation of your skin, or you take scriptures out of context, you're a wicked man. You do damage and destruction. And you're wrong. And I'm not afraid to say it. I can be found. You can reach us on our website, www.yahwehsword.org. You can contact us by calling us, area code 843-658-6222. This has been a privilege, Re'ach David Yisrael, to teach the simple truth unto his nation, his people. Visit the website. We have countless messages on every subject. We have a beautiful community here in Jefferson, South Carolina, as you can see behind me. The beauty of this most blusterous day is cold, but it's a beautiful day. Uh, may God's riches rest upon you, all nation. May your strength be uh, encouraged. May your strength be modified in the Torah of Yah. And let us not be so gullible. This is a teaching that is precise. I have not conformed scripture to fit a subject. It is the scripture that made the subject. Esau, Edomite, strangers of Yisraeli. Are they strangers? Do you know the seed? Can you identify? Can you identify the house? You will know a son of Yehuda. If I came talking to you, you will wonder where are you from? Where were you born? People ask me that all the time. Where are you from? No, I don't sound like an islander. I don't sound like I'm from Jamaica. No, man, I'm not from Jamaica, man. Ah, uh, where are you from? Why? I learned at an early age. People would say, well, oh, man, you... Oh, I've never heard nobody talk like that. <laughs> How are you baptized? I said, I went down in water. But when are you going to tell me how? You said I'm saying things that you had not heard. Is it the truth? This is this ignorant generation. So if you don't become a part of these little organizations and groups, that those that teach you don't have to keep the feast, they, these are liars. But they will want to see tassels all the way down, tassels down to their knees, down to their ankles. And yet, if you do this, I'm going to teach you on this one day, one word. It's, listen, what I taught you today, I have 25 pages of scripture. 25. There are 25 pages of scripture. There's 25 pages. And I did not utilize all them. And if I taught on the words, Olam Viat, and the things that Yah says, that they are eternal, never change, then these people that wear the tassels don't even keep the feast days. We need wise men to teach us. You're listening and have listened to Re'ak David Yisrael here in Teshua community. We say to you all that are scattered as Kefa and Yakahana and scattered strangers of America, of Russia, China, Australia, the continent of Africa, in Britain, in France, in Canada. We say unto you, O Shalom, the riches of God rest upon you, and the fullness of Hamashiach, Yoshua. Fill your mind and your heart, that you rejoice constantly in the promise, the Tabarim of Torah. Again we say, Yah's greetings and His blessing fill your heart. Shalom Yisraya, the nation of Yah.